I'm Hayley from Craft Yourself Silly and I'm really excited to be working with you guys here at the Craft Store. We've been here since the very beginning and hopefully we'll continue to bring you lots of new and exciting soft craft projects. So make sure you join me and Craft Yourself Silly here at the Craft Store. Good morning. Do you know what? This morning we're taking you to the farm. That's where we're going this morning. Um, we have got uh, Daisy May Designs. Lou Collins is here. Hello, Lou. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So you're here for Claire this morning, aren't you? Yes, I'm Claire today. I'm Claire. Um, I wish I had <laughs> half of the talent that Claire has, but no. Um, unfortunately, Claire Rowland, designer for Daisy May, is a little bit under the weather, so Fair I've enough. stepped in for her. So hopefully I can do her stamp sets justice because they are absolutely beautiful. You know you will. We we'll try. You definitely. Definitely will. Right, so what we've got is a complete collection. It's all of this if you want to. Now, if you go onto the website, you, we can break it down into little chunks if you've got some favourites, if your budget can't quite stretch. But as always, you're getting some fabulous savings. Now, it's not just £3 saving that you're getting on this collection because each of the stamp set bundles carries over. Uh, so you've got, in fact, it'll end up being a three, um, sorry, £15 saving once we've done all the carries over. But we've got all sorts here. We've got paper pads. We've got fabulous stamps. And they're, yes. they're very characterful, aren't they? They are. They're absolutely beautiful. So um, Claire, so Claire Rowlands, as I was talking about, she um, hand draws everything. So we've got some fantastic characters here there is so much life in them and each yeah. one tells a story they are really beautiful and you can team them together not only within the collection but also with all of Claire's past collections as well because yeah. of the scale and the style they all work really well together amazing wait 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 so we've got our tractor here but look at him look at this chap again he's he's, he's, very, he's won a trophy what's he got a prize they look like onions to me. Do you reckon but, you that's know, a prize onion? Or something. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think it, yeah, he's definitely he's been he's been into in, uh, to the village fete and yeah. have had the biggest vegetable competition and he's won. <laughs> I love that. Again, fifth year in a row. It's really good story. Yeah. So we've got our Mr. Scarecrow. He's really cool. Scarecrow kisses and warmest wishes. Love that. Is lovely, perfect for this time of year. Obviously, harvest um, is upon us now. I live in the countryside, so all of these scenes yeah. are just what I see all the time. I love it. Amazing. And then we've got another one here. Let's bring this in. So we've got our chap there with his stick. I love that he's like he's very proud, isn't he? You can tell he's a very oh. proud farmer. Definitely. Um, I think he's he's sort of the shepherd with his sheepdog there, isn't he? Mm. Uh, we have got the sheep elsewhere as well that they're trying to herd. Um, by the looks of them later on with not a lot of luck. <laughs> They're really funny. They're great characters. And like you say, there's a story behind everyone. You can really have some fun with these. There's something really comical about a lot of Claire's designs. <gasps> I think we're doing a bit of... Um... Oh, line dancing. Thank you. I was going yes. to say online dancing. I went, that's not right. Well, nowadays uh, <laughs> it might be. <laughs> that's so fun. And again, look at all of the extra detail that we've got here. We've got the hay bales. We've got the lanterns. And again, they're having a really jolly time. Uh, we've got this one with our horses. There you go. And what's that say? Hope you're back in the saddle soon. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, the, the, the quotes, uh, the sentiments that Claire chooses for her stamp sets are always spot on when it comes to matching with the images. But you can, again, mix and match them if you want to. So rather than just saying, get well soon, yeah. which we find across many stamp sets and dies and things, she's given us something really unique. Yeah, absolutely. Last one I've got here for you. Look at these. These samples are amazing, aren't they? Yeah, we've got a fantastic design team. And they've all obviously pulled together um, super quick to get things done. With mm -hmm. um, Claire's sent some in. I know she's poorly, but she's managed to still send as much Claire. in as possible. So, uh, well, get well soon, Claire. And thank you to the design team. Excellent. What I might do is swap a few from the back, and then we can have a look at those as well. Um, so... Um, we oh that's ten o'clock show apparently that's okay, a teaser ah oh. oh, okay right 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 um, uh, so we've also got um, the paper pad here so you can again build the scenes absolutely so you've got six different designs here all eight by eight fantastic quality cardstock they're not double sided so you don't need to choose the colours are so bright and vivid and they make you really want to bring in or inject more colour into mm. your stamp designs whether you're colouring whether you're doing uh, watercolours maybe however you like to work with your stamps and I'm hoping to show you lots of different techniques this hour and the 10 o'clock hour cool. for using your stamps. 
Wonderful. So look at all of these stamps. So you've got your paper pad, you've got all of these stamps. So you've got your 8x8 eight eight paper pad, you've got your 6x6 six six stencil, because I've forgotten about the stencil. And then you've also got your 8x8 eight, eight A5 stamp sets that are all going to be building a scene for you. They're cool. There's something a little bit different, and I like that. So if you want to go for the whole collection, it's £79.90, and pence, but we have got it on FlexiBuy for you. Two payments of £39.95. and pence. But remember, although it says on screen about it's a £3 saving, it isn't. When you add up all the savings for the individual bundles, it'll end up being £15. Uh, 651328 is your item number. Now, let's have a look at the individual bundles if you've got some favourites. So here we go. So you can go for um, our lovely set with the farmer with his prize onion. <laughs> I love that. Um, you've got all oh, those a piggy stamp set you can go for. Uh, you've got the tractor stamp set. What else have we got here? Uh, you can go for the horses if you want to, the line dancers. There's some sheepies. I really like the sheep. Actually, you're predicting that the sheep might be a favourite. Because it comes in a bundle with the cow as well, yeah. and they are both my two favourites. I'm just really fortunate they're bundled together. I mean, yeah. I've got all of them, of course. I couldn't do without. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think the sheep and cows today. Amazing. Right, then, all you need to do is give us a call to place your order, 01733602000. Or, as we've just seen, you can go to the website at thecraftstore.com. Over to you then, Lou. Thank you. So um, what I'm going to do today is actually show you some colouring techniques because um, to colour one of these stamp sets, they are large stamp sets. They're all A5 in size, so they're really nice big designs. So with these, they are going to take a little while if you want to colour them in in lots of detail. There's quicker ways of going about it, which actually in the 10 o'clock show, I've got a really quick way of stamping and colouring, kind of colouring some images. So uh, make sure you join me for that one as well. But to properly colour these in with alcohol pens or your colouring pencils, which I'm going to show you both today, um, it would take a little while. So I'm just going to show you some little techniques instead so it doesn't take too long. But stamping them. so. I'm going to work with my brand new set rather than my used set, so it's nice and clean for you. Yeah. Um, but just to remind you, when you do get a new stamp set, the best way to, I find to prepare it is to just take that coating off that you get from the manufacturing process. So there's a little bit of a coating on there that might resist your ink for the first once or twice you stamp it. So if you just rub over it, you can do it with your hands, but I tend to take... Um, an oh. eraser, just a pencil eraser. Okay. I've got a nice big one. It's about 99p from the supermarket. <laughs> Nothing special. And I just rub over the top surface there. Oh. Now, if I was to use Good my tip. hands to do that, which a lot of people do, I use a lot of hand cream. So I'm basically right. putting moisture back into the stamp, which I don't want to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to be working for this particular image with alcohol pens. I've got a variety. I'll go through the brands in a moment. Um, so I'm going to use Memento ink. Um, for me, this is the only ink that I'll use with alcohol pens because the alcohol won't react with it. It won't dissolve it or water it down or move it about. Once, right. it's, once it's on there and it's dried, it's dried. It's staying. Um, and I know Paola does some fantastic shows and I know she put together kind of a a chart, I think it was, mm -hmm. of which inks to yes, use. Yes, I learned so much and yeah. I went and bought all of those inks and, yeah. and downloaded her um, little chart that you said. It's yeah. fabulous. Really, really handy. Yay. Look how perfect that has stamped. <laughs> and it's, it is so much fun, this one with the sheep. I love it. Um, thank you is with E. EWE is one of the sentiments that comes with this one. What else do we have? Just looking in detail at the stamps. So we've got, they're, they're quite small, some of these, because they're handwritten. So we've got, you are awesome. We've got, thinking of you. Uh, we'll always be friends. <laughs> Thank you and love you, which I just think covers so yeah. many different occasions. I love that, <laughs> in the nicest possible way, you've got the sheep's backside at the top. <laughs> yeah, that, do you know what? That's my favourite bit. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. Like yeah. They're trying to get an Nice photo and there's always one it's just like humans isn't it yeah. there's always one that doesn't quite play ball <laughs> uh, now when it comes to brands of pens I'm going to um, bring in I've got a full basket here and they're not all the same brand um, I've got some that are illustrated ones from Spectrum Noir I've got chameleon ones I've got all sorts so you don't have to have thousands of one brand. Mm -hmm. You can mix and match alcohol pens as That's long good. as they are alcohol. Yep. I'm also going to bring in some pencil for some texture as well. So really we're just working with what you've got. Now the first thing I want to show you is how to build up texture when you're working with pens. Because uh, we're going to colour in a black sheep. 
because there's always a, a black sheep in every family, isn't there? Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> Definitely not me. Um, it's my cousin. <laughs> so, how do you colour a black sheep? You'd assume that you just take a black pen and you just colour in but you won't you'll lose all the texture you'll also lose all of the uh, design there so we actually rarely do even use a black at all um, you might do a tiny little bit but not much at all I'm going to come in with the greys now Claire has put some detail into the stamp as you can see we've got some some kind of lumps and bumps of the of the wool there already and you can use these to your advantage so I'm going to use the larger nib here and you have to excuse me because when I'm coloring I tend to get like like this close when I'm at home <laughs> coloring so I'm going to try and avoid doing that and I'm going to try and see what I'm doing without my glasses oh on. don't worry be comfortable <laughs> we'll be I'll, fine I'll squat down like this but no if you see my head coming in I apologize no no I'm absolutely fine okay. honestly I'm just apologizing now in case there's any any head sort of creeping into shot when I forget what I'm doing or if my tongue comes out that's the other <laughs> thing I do that. um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these little knobbly bits that Claire's put on there and I'm going to use them as highlights so I've got a really pale grey it is um, this one's a bluey grey colour so what I've done is I've picked my greys it's hard to believe you actually get different greys isn't it but you do get cool greys and warm mm. greys so I'm sticking with cool greys um, and I've got the lightest one that I've got first of all and like I say you don't have to worry about sticking with the same brand of pens so um, don't panic if you haven't got a massive set to choose from so I've gone in with my knobbly bits first. I'm going to keep <laughs> calling them that. I'm sorry. The, the lumps of wool that are sticking out. There you go. I like knobbly bits. Um, yeah. And then we're going to imagine the sheep is a, a sphere. Yeah. Okay. So I go back to my school days. You know, remember drawing that sphere and putting the light and the shadows in that mm -hmm. the art teachers always used to make you do. So the light for me is always coming from the top left-hand side. I don't know why. This, for some reason, the world doesn't turn when I'm drawing and it's always <laughs> in the same place. So I'm going to add some more dots around here. And I'm not... Not doing any straight strokes I'm doing all little dots and little squiggles and little squir squirrels and swirls and then I'm going to start fading that out so just add in a few more okay so I've kind of got my light here so this is the lightest part these are going to be the highlights of the black wool and then we're going to come in with the next one and this is going to be the next sort of the mid gray one mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go around those areas I'm basically now going to fill in everywhere else. I don't know if any of you remember when you had to do this sphere and learn about light and shadow in art. Although you've got a light edge, there was always one dark line along that light edge, along the very edge before you actually saw the light, um, which was kind of the shadow that was behind. So I've just added my dark line along the edge and then I've got my lighter pieces. And it doesn't matter as well, even though we're doing black here, it doesn't matter if you leave some small white areas because mm. you would have natural highlights or like me going grey. So either way, you'll have some little <laughs> white bits in there. And again, I'm not, I'm not doing any strokes, any lines, any dashes. They are all mm. little squiggles with my pen. I'm going to fill this in and it does take a little while, but do you know what? It's so therapeutic. I colour almost every day. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I oh. love them. Yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed. So I've had about, uh, just over about 24 hours notice. I think it's probably really? about 36, that quick? 36 hours notice of Bless poor you. Claire. Um, I know, I'm sure she she was waiting to the last minute to have to call off yeah. uh, coming. But yeah, so I really hope she gets better soon. Um, so yeah, so playing with these for the last sort of day solidly mm -hmm. has been absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I am so chilled out, you wouldn't <laughs> believe. It That's is good very relaxing and you don't, of course you don't have to color either you don't always have to sit and color in for hours if you just want to stamp and do a monotone mm. or monochrome card you can do that because Claire puts so much detail into her stamps or we'll also stamp straight onto the paper pad that's in the collection because yep. that's the, the back it's done for you then absolutely okay so nearly done just filling in the main part of the color and at the moment it still doesn't look like a black sheep but it will do mm -hmm. so there we go so at the moment we've got a slightly lighter edge in this top corner coming down to a little bit darker here but let's just emphasize that a little bit more now I'm going to skip actually to a fourth one so I've got my black here which I will use my black right at the very end for the tiniest tiniest little shadows but I'm going to go to a gray and again you can see I'm switching the type of pen so mm -hmm. still alcohol based 
and still working in those little circles, little squiggles, I'm going to come around and imagining again this is my sphere, I'm going to be doing my shadows now in the bottom right hand corner. Yep. And anywhere else that's, well that I feel like as well, but we've got these light grey pieces that would be sticking out, they would be forming shadows mm -hmm. underneath. Okay. So we're going to put shadows underneath the light grey areas. Did you study art at school? Yes. Ah. I did, yes. Yeah. So I loved it during school anyway, but then I did art and design at A-level. Ah, uh, okay. So, but I can't, re I don't remember many of my lessons. A lot of this is really just playing and experience. No, because I'm learning loads already about sort of th where the light comes from. Right, yes. Mm. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's reasonably basic knowledge that you can take to any any project yeah. so anything you're coloring I mean it's lucky that the sheep looks like a sphere because we were always made to do circles at school <laughs> um, but can you see hopefully there we're building up the texture it's starting to come in now by using those tiny little dots um, and we're just now filling in now around the head again if the lights coming this way around the underneath of the head and the side of the head you're going to have a lot of um, shadow there so we're going to do dots smaller and under the ear here, you're going to have shadows, so some around there. And the beauty of alcohol pens is, of course, they blend really wonderfully. Mm. So if you do make a mistake with a darker colour, you can often lift up some of that ink and blend it out with, um, you can get ink blending pens, which are yep. just a clear ink, or even a, light, a much lighter colour. You can often fade is, some of that out. Is that a really, really dark grey, or is that a black? This is a dark grey. Okay. But in the grand scheme, once you start looking at this yeah. from a distance, you start thinking, oh, that's a black sheep. Yeah. Because actually black is never true black, is it? You, you usually get so many other colours in there. Mm. So I'm going to avoid this top corner, keeping the light there. Yeah. And then lastly, I'm going to come in with my... This is my black, and I'm not going to do so much of this, but I'm keeping with my squiggles. Okay, and I'm just going to go around the bottom base here, around where the really dark shadows would be, which is obviously around this sheep and around the base of the head and just give that contrast. You can do a couple in there elsewhere if you want. So if I just bring in this one that I worked on, obviously this one was a oh, wow. doing it a lot more as such. So yeah. um, coming wow. in, we yeah, once you start working with it and start layering up, because what you would do now is you could go back in with your lighter grey and you could start blending some mm -hmm. of these in. So you lose some of those harsh lines and they start to look more like, like wool, soften and, it up. And is it right, because I, I actually don't have any alcohol markers, is it right you sort of got to wait for it to evaporate? And yes. Then, yeah. So I was actually going to do an example of that and I've got my heat gun here for you. So oh, okay. I just like to show you. <laughs> So this is uh, a light grey, so if I colour that on, you can see we've got quite a bit of colour in there. But a lot of that colour there is actually just dampness on the paper. That is the um, that is the alcohol in the pen mm -hmm. soaking into the paper. So if I just dry this, okay. which usually you wouldn't be, you know, it would evaporate in the air in a few minutes. Yeah. But if I just dry that off, and then you'll see the true colour coming in, that's lightened up a lot. Yeah, more. Probably not the best colour to show you with. I think we've lost we've lost most of the colour there. So always dry dry it or allow it to dry rather. I wouldn't recommend keep drying and drying yes. because you'll warp your paper. Um, but yeah, allow it to dry between layers if you want to. If you want to see the true colour, unless you you're doing something that you do regularly, like a skin tone. Um, so that's how you start building up that texture in the sheep there, and you can do it the same for the lighter one as well. But then I come in lastly with a pencil. It doesn't have to be black, I've got a grey here. And I'm going to go in. Now a pencil for me has a kind of texture, and a grainy texture. Mm -hmm. And for the sheep's wool I find this absolutely perfect. And I'm just going to go in small circles with this, so it is a dark grey, very lightly all over the sheep. So there's nothing wrong with bringing in pencil to your alcohol pen colouring at all you can absolutely do that. So don't think, well, if I'm colouring with alcohol pens, I've got to stick to alcohol pens. You don't at all. And there we go. So that would be, finish, keep layering that up and you have this. Now, when I'm colouring these images as well, to make them stand out so 
you can color in a complete sky background but that does take a little bit of time but what i love to do when i've got an image like this that's kind of floating so as you can see you've got the the grass it kind of stops um, do you, if this was your panel on your card, would you feel like you need to continue the grass or mm -hmm. you need to colour the grass down to here or add something into the sky? So I add this blue sort of shadow around there. So I was just going to show you how I do that. And this is again taking a couple of different steps. So I've got a blue, and again, I've got all different brands of pens mm -hmm. here. Cool. But I've got uh, a, me a mid blue, a quite a pale colour, a nice light colour, a mid blue. A really, this is a really, really pale blue, barely noticeable. And then I've got my colourless blender, which comes with a lot of alcohol pen sets. And I'm just going to go, uh, let's work around the edge of this sheep here. And I would work in reasonably small areas as well, so just to work the alcohol pen out or the ink out before it dries. So I'm going to colour in that blue there. Then I'm going to take the next one down and I'm going to go... Uh, right over the edge there, right over the the, the um, edge of the colouring, basically going back over it mm -hmm. and extending it. And given a minute or two, that would actually then start to blend out. And then I'd take my colourless blender, because there's an ever such a slight amount of colour in that baby blue that I just used. Yep. And I would use my colour colourless blender and do exactly the same over everything, extending it out. So I've come out probably half an inch mm -hmm. in total, and that just adds mm. this tiny amount of colour to the background. That kind of, it kind of anchors the image down then, rather than having it floating. And I would do this with almost any colouring thing. If I'm not cutting it out, if I'm stamping and colouring directly onto a panel that I'm going to leave as a full panel and I'm not fussy cutting, I would do that. So hopefully there's some techniques for you. So let's build up a card now. So I've come in with, uh, well you can see I've already cut this into a shape, so I've got this really nice frame shape. Mm. Um, Daisy May do some lovely nesting dies. Yeah. Um, I know we don't have them on the show today. You might have some of them on the website, though. They are beautiful. Some are plain edge and some are more of your sort of torn edges and things. So I've taken a dark grey. So remember, the black sheep wasn't a black. It was a dark grey. So I've got a dark grey cardstock that is a closer colour as I could find yeah. there. And I'm going to map these. So they're die cut in exactly the same size just because I couldn't find uh, a nesting die in my stash that was just millimetres bigger than this one. So instead, I've cut the same size one and I'm just going to mm. offset it slightly to give me that drop shadow. Looks good. And then I've used, I think it was part of the same set, actually, I've got so many of them. <laughs> um, and this is, again, it's a Daisy May nesting set, but it's got a stitched edge around it. Um, so I've just inked the stitch edge, stitched edge. I folded a piece of cardstock and then I've die cut it again whilst folded leaving so I haven't got that top edge so I've got my card base and this is going to stick onto the front to make a full shaped card oh there's something lovely about shaped cards oh I love them I love yes. the dies that help you do that it's so different yeah to your usual I mean I love a square I think a square is my go-to shape for a card but sometimes particularly with this set I love that like that you can add in the shapes and the colors to the bases you can bring in all those rustic country colors it's absolutely gorgeous. I was thinking, so I really like the way you've edged that uh, card as well with the brown so yeah. keeping things reasonably neutral so I'm just going to use a foam tape so I've got my uh, craft stash foam tape here and it's nice and chunky a pair of scissors so this will just raise this up ever so slightly pop that on the back I would usually go around the edge a little bit neater than that but for demonstration purposes, make it nice and quick. That's all good. And then, so popping that on there. So I've kept to the same sort of colours throughout the design. Mm. So we've got what you'd call, I guess, their skin tones, which are all varied. But um, the hats, the flowers and the ribbons in the hats, I've made them kind of this coral colour that works with the colours of their ears and things like that. So that sort of pinky, peachy colour. So then I can bring that in in the decoration as well. Mm -hmm. So I've got some peachy colour flowers. Um, I did forget this morning to bring in my hot glue gun, which is what I'd usually use. So I'm going to use some photo glue for my florals here. I've just got three of them. I do love to put 
a flower on a card, if I can, a paper flower. Now these are not, I'm going to have to, I can't hold this up for a while. Don't because, worry. Maybe we can find you a glue gun for uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, I don't know if I'll need one actually that hour. I think oh, this is fair. the only bit that I'll have needed a glue gun for, which is why I didn't think of it, because it was just such a small amount. But I'll have to show you this card laying down until it's dried a little bit later. So just whoop, plenty of glue there. Just a small fl floral cluster mm. plus a little bow, which is just some like garden twine. Yep. I don't want to cover up the sheep too much, so I'm going to kind of tuck don't that in. Don't cover up the sheep's bum. No, because I think <laughs> that is the cutest part. There's always, there's, there is, isn't there? There's always one in a photo that yeah. just doesn't quite get what, where the camera is, <laughs> or what, what like you're that. doing. Um, but this is what I was saying earlier about the shepherd that's in the set, in the collection. It, it's almost as if the shepherd there is, is trying to herd these sheep and having absolutely no luck at all because <laughs> of where they are. And then I've got the stamped... Thank you, which obviously comes from the stamp set as well. I've just yep. sat that, I've matted that on from white onto the same grey, and there you go. Like I say, I won't hold that up until those flowers are dry because they'll all drop off at the moment. Um, but once the glue's dry, I can stand that up, and we've got a shaped card there with all the stamped images. I just think that's so cute. It is, isn't it? Thank you, Lou. You're right, welcome. I'll do my, I'll do my numbers and then I'll do come back to you. Okay. Nice. Now, we're going to break this down uh, in case, as we said, you know, the full collection, you can't quite stretch to it at the moment. So let's start off then with this lovely little bundle. So you've got your stencil, again, great for your scene building, and the paper pad is so vivid. Um, I've got some of the pages here so that you can take a look. It's a really, really lovely quality paper. Um, now, it's 190 GSM and it's so vibrant, isn't it? So if colouring isn't your thing, then literally you can just stamp your images. You can either cut them out and decoupage them up or literally stamp straight onto here. It's totally up to you. Now, you've got six designs and you're getting four of each. I love these little sheepies. You can colour those in as well. They're cute, aren't they? You've really got some perspective, but what lovely, beautiful colours. They just make you happy. Look at that. I mean, look at the sky. It's a beautiful set of scenes, isn't it? Love that. OK, so if you want to go for your stencil and your paper pad, and you've got a lot of pages in that paper pad, uh, it's £14.98. Item number is 374778. Next, then, we're moving on to our stamp sets. So we've got our prize farmer who's grown an enormous onion. Uh, you've also got some fab sentiments on there. Am I all right to pick this up? Uh, thanking you, because you know my eyesight. So you've got you are number one with a little help from my friends. Best of cluck to watch that first thing in the morning. Um, you are simply the best and then best in show. And you've also got the um, uh, the lovely, there's the chicken and there's, I think he's a goose, possibly. What do we reckon? Which one's that? This one. Yeah, we'll go with Goose. We'll go with Goose. Yeah. Excellent. So you get him. And then um, down here again, you've got, I love these, these are the little piggies. Aren't they so cute? And you've literally got things like, thanks so much. I really like that. That's really funny. Um, right, so if you'd like to go for that little bundle. Now, you can see there's a £3 saving, so just bear that in mind because it will carry over. It's £16.98. And if you think about the size of the stamps, the detail in the stamps, the fact that you get your sentiment, it's really good value, £16.98. Item number is 593862. Then, moving on, we've got our tractor and our lovely um, shepherd. There he is. Oh, yes, and the scarecrows in this as well. Um, so they're a really, again, great set. And the sentiments, again, they've been really, really well thought out. May I once more? I'm just going to pick this up. Uh, so here you've got, you are all heart. You've got hay, as in hay, there. Um, and then scarecrow kisses and warmest wishes, which I really like. And there's a thank you. So they're great. And it's also coming to you with this one. Um, and then uh, forever friends and one man and his dog and always put your best paw forward look at the dogs aren't they adorable this is really nice now this pairing this pairing has been really busy so you're liking these two uh, 16 pounds and 98 pence and you've got a three pound saving again that's going to carry over so we're up to six pounds carrying over three three eight five two six is your item number next one 
What have we got? Oh, we've got our horses. Uh, and we've also got our line dancing couple, which are really, really good fun, aren't they? They are having a blast. I think they've had some rum. <laughs> uh, when in doubt, dance it out. I think that's a very good motto, don't you? OK, again, £16.98 pence for the pair. Um, again, you've got all those extras, the centre, not just the focal points, but you've got the lanterns, etc. Really nice. £16.98, pence, £3 carrying over, so we're now up to £9 over. Uh, 684673 is your item number. And then, last but not least, oh, this is, you predicted very well, Lou. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is the favourite pairing because we've got the cows. We're so cute. I love the one cow's wearing a hat. I think that's just fabulous. <laughs> and then we've also got the sheepies. So they're there as well. Uh, again, £16.98, another £3 carrying over, up to £12. And by the time we've added on that extra £3 for the whole collection, you've got a £15 saving. So now I've grabbed a few samples here. Look, this is a full collection. Here we go. We've got that, um, the piggies. They're very happy. Oh, they're, they are <laughs> pigs in mud, aren't they? They yeah. really are. I, I love this. I want to name them. I feel like I need to name all of the animals. <gasps> Email in. <laughs> Email in if you're up. Uh, end up there happily munching on a barrel of apples there. So it's one of those that you really need to look at them because the detail that mm. Claire's put into them are fabulous. Yeah, I mean, after this demonstration, I think what I'm going to do if we get time is just stamp some of these so you can sure. see the detail because there is a lot to look at. And obviously in the packet, you can't quite see it all. So fingers crossed we'll get time to do that. But oh, things totally. like, I mean, I would love to demonstrate every single one of these. Yeah. They're so fun. I mean, I want to call that, that that's got to be Daisy. It's got to be, hasn't got it? Got to be with the hat on, got to be Daisy. Amazing. And she's got some flowers in her hair at the front. Uh, happy birthday to Moo. <laughs> so clever. We've got the dog sat there. Just look at all that. And using the papers in the background, which is fab. And then we've got our lovely scarecrow. I, that's such a nice sentiment. Scarecrow kisses and warmest wishes. I think that's fab. Perfect at harvest time, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Um, and then we've got, here he is. He's come first in this competition. I think he's being clapped by the birds here, <laughs> isn't he? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. And this one, this is really nice. Just the silver, the black and the red, boom, really pops. Yep, red tractor. I mean, this would be perfect for any age, wouldn't it? As Absolutely. Well. And um, gents' cards as well as ladies' cards, most definitely. Um, <clears throat> hope you're back in the saddle soon. Again, that's another fabulous one. We've got a lovely little chicken there. Uh, last one to show you. We're going to our sheep. There you go fabulously coloured. This is really nice. Again, you've got those papers in the background. That's lovely. That's a whole collection. Right, so if you want to go for the full collection, it's £79.90, and pence, but we have got it on Flexibuy. Two payments of £39.95. 651328. Okay, we've got some uh, seven-day savers. What day are we on? Wednesday, Wednesday. I haven't seen these yet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lou's shaking her head. Nobody knows. Since COVID, nobody knows. I was going to say Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Uh, right, so, okay, you've got four days to get this. At least I can read that and know sort of what day I'm on. Uh, right, so we have got um, some foam tape. If you're in eat now, that's a good old job lot, isn't it? If you're running low on that. Uh, we've also got uh, so we've got the cutter. Uh, we've got a nice paper craft collection. It's got a five star review. More tape. We're clearly in tape realm. Oh, I love those paints. Those paints are fab, and they come with the um, little sponges as well. Uh, nice. Oh, is that La Blanche? Excellent. What have we got? More tape. Yeah, <laughs> tape. Clearly, we're all short of tape must be there's a lot of seven day savers actually more than normal got a nice little embroidery set it looks like there with the hoops etc and what's that hessian oh, bit of Hesse red hessian oh that's cool oh i like that you can make some place max with that uh okie dokie so do check out your uh, seven day savers now without further ado i'm going to hand back to you lee Thank you. So we're going to look at those horses this time and I'm moving away from the alcohol pens and I'm going to work with pencils because I think if you're new to stamping and colouring, 
Obviously, investing in alcohol pens, it is a big investment. There's no other word for it. They're not always inexpensive. So uh, sometimes, for some people, alcohol, or rather, sorry, colouring pencils are more accessible. They might be something that even your children have laying around at home that you can use. So I'm going to just um, trim down my paper, actually, because my stamping platform doesn't quite fit. But I'm going to show you some pencil techniques instead this for this one and I think it will actually works really well with the kind of rustic feel of this more of a natural feel some of these stamped images and I'm wondering whether that barn dance in mm -hmm. the stamped image is taking over the horse's barn do you think maybe they kick the horses out and have the barn dance in there perhaps I, li I like to think up little, little stories for each of these um, do you remember the film Babe yeah. No, I've only ever seen part of it, believe it or not. Uh, with all the talking animals yeah. and things like that. And I think there's the rooster right at the beginning. This just completely reminds me of that, mm. for, for whatever reason. Um, now, I'm going to go to Versifying Claire. It doesn't matter for this one which ink you're using because we're just using pencil. Sure. So just something that dries nice and quickly is ideal. Um, I love this because you've just got the stable door, Yeah. Um, you've got the rooster, you've got a little sneak inside the stable as well. Um, and, but you can kind of put this on whatever setting you want it to be. So if you want to build um, a, the walls and the ceiling and everything you can, if you want to leave it in the middle, obviously this is a dry, drying up ink pad, I probably need to replace this, this is, this is actually for everything else other than alcohol paint colouring, mm -hmm. this is my go-to. So yeah. I yeah, use I like it. I use there. it a lot mm. for the detail. So look at that. Fab. Absolutely beautiful. And to think Claire actually hand draws all of these. She is so, so clever. So Do you know I'll... how long she's been going for? A couple of years at least. Yeah. At least, if not a lot more. Claire mm -hmm. would know exactly. I mean, I've been working alongside Claire and um, obviously practical publishing and craft stash for a few years right. and yeah she's, she's just amazing oh, she's just, I, I absolutely love love I'm sure she's collections yeah. well if she's not hopefully she'll watch on catch up yeah. to see we see what i do with her stamps <laughs> um so we've got the horses there they're really really beautiful they are stunning um i've got a very i come from a very horsey family not myself but my sister-in-law and her daughters all oh, ride right. horses they have horse and everything so um, this would be perfect for them and in fact it's my niece's birthday the same day as mine actually september in the middle of september yeah um so this is going to be a card for her oh perfect yeah. we've got a producer here who's got a horse called roger oh, oh that's a per that's the perfect <laughs> name for a horse isn't it yeah. definitely i can't think of any really horsey names um i don't know Rod I, 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 roger I, sounds perfect is it? and then they've been doing lots of competitions together and she's been doing very well Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. I suppose that is something you've still been able to do over the last 18 months because the horse needs looking after Absolutely. it, still needs riding and caring for. Um, lovely. So pencils. Now, pencils aren't scary. I think they're less scary than pens. So for a beginner, they're ideal. So what I'm going to do is show you how to get the texture in the wood in the background and how to make the wheelbarrow look like rusty metal. OK, so we're going to start with our lighter colours and build up to the dark, much like we did with the sheep. Um, with this one, I don't know if you remember with the sheep, we were doing just the little circles because we wanted the texture of those little circles in the sheep's fur. So what we're going to do with these wood pieces here is the opposite. We're going to do lines and we're going to stick with lines throughout the entire colouring of this um, wood here. Now I'm not going to do the whole door because that would take us all morning. No, it won't. It'll probably take us about 20 minutes, but um, we want to put this card together. So I'll just do three panels. So I've just got in with my lighter colour. Yep. When you look at wood, there are a lot of different colour variations. Mm. A lot. So I have got, I'm just, I was going to put these on the glass mat. I think they might roll around a bit. But you can see I've got lots of different browns and greys here. That's kind of a yellowy colour. So I'm just going to go in with another brown and do the same and just keep working down in trying not to go directly over the lines I've just done just keep working down in lines and you can vary your lines by doing squiggles or you can do straight lines but we don't want uh, colouring this way or colouring diagonally we don't want lines that are close together we want some of the highlights of that wood to come through as well and very soon you'll find that you're starting to build up texture without even trying so i'm going to come to a slightly lighter color now now wood has obviously browns in it it has reds in it 
it will have, if, it, if it's wood that's been there a while, it might even have some greens in it where mm -hmm. water's sat, things like this. So, so just experiment with the different colours. Um, obviously, you want an overall brown colour. If it's not a treated wood, mm -hmm. you may want to go with an orangey tone. But just working in the lines all the time. The top here, we can do kind of a bit of a block colour. There, so I'm going to bring in a little more warmth with an orange. Not a lot, just a couple of lines. That looks fab already. So from a distance, mm. so I get, I get zoned in and I start looking really, really closely at it. I'm going to come back to this yellow and start filling in gaps. And I'm not being too precise mm -hmm. about where I'm putting my pencil. I'm kind of just randomly going along. And then you get your random lines, which would, 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 would be... <laughs> So I get really, like I say, I get zoned in, so I get, I'm looking at the small area at once. You need to step back. Every now and then you need to step back and look at it from a distance. Even walk away and yep. come back to it and then look at it again. Now I've got quite a bit of texture in here. I'm quite happy with that. Most of the white is now filled in. We've got a few highlights of white, which is fine. So now I need to add a little bit of darker shading. And that's going to be a, a long where the wood planks are, the gaps in mm -hmm. the wood. So Claire's drawn all this in for you. Yep, brilliant. And you've also got knots as well. So I'm just doing some squiggles where the knots are too. So each of those, a little bit more at the top and mm -hmm. the edge here. So kind of adding shadows in. There might be a little bit of darkness, but again, my, even my shading is going to be in little lines yeah. around where the hinge are. You make things look so realistic. It's um, it's fairly, I suppose it's fairly simple, isn't it, when you break it down. So, well, actually, with any of the texture, just keep to that shape when you're colouring. No, but I'm just really layering. learning a lot from your techniques. Because it's stuff, like, the way you explain things, it's like, oh, oh, I could do that. Yeah. And, you know? And I think anyone can colour. I know we talked about how I did art at school. Mm -hmm. um, but I think anyone can colour. It's just practice and having the confidence. Yeah. So what I'm doing now with my dark pencil, I'm not worried about overlapping into the wheelbarrow a little bit because I'm going to be doing that next. I'm going to cover it over, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's going to be shadow shading underneath the wheelbarrow. Obviously, the, the wood at the back there is going to be a bit darker, so I'm adding in more lines uh, where the carrots are. So I'll do a nice dark bit, and then I'll kind of flick up. And if you do this around, that will gradually add some shading and shadow in behind so as if the wheelbarrow barrow is casting a shadow on there and then my little lines under here as well so we've got shading got on the back there of the wood so we've got the shadow from the wheelbarrow we've got the texture in there and you can keep working at that again you can keep going in the beauty of working with pencils of course is if you need to you can come in and you can, if you need to lighten an area up, yep. you can, of course, erase it. Oh. So, you know, I'm not going to fill that back in. I have got a coloured in version already. Sure. So let's look at getting our the texture in our wheelbarrow. Now, we want very different texture here. We want a metal, so it's going to be a smoother surface. Smooth, I say smoother. Um, so I sort of corrected myself. So for this one, I'm going to lay down with a pale grey or a kind of a base colour a colour all over. Now if you're trying to get a solid colour with pencils for any reason, what you want to do is colour in one direction lightly. And the idea with pencils is always to layer up lightly. You never go in hard until you're doing the final details and you're sure of where your colour's going. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to do the same the opposite direction. Because all, te all paper is textured. Mm -hmm. Even if it feels smooth, you've got a slight texture. And when you start colouring, what your pencil's going to do is pick up darker texture on the grain of the paper. Mm, you can see so, that. Actually. Yes, you can see it. So you just want to make sure you're colouring in very lightly, as many different uh, directions as possible, just to get as smooth a colour as possible. So yeah. I've then got my base colour laid down. What I'm going to do now is take a nice bright orange and I'm going to come in underneath the rim of the wheelbarrow around I think there's looks like there's a rust spot there at the bottom as well hmm. and a couple of other areas so just squiggles rust spots and then I'm going to add a little bit of brown to these as well to make them more speckled okay 
and then I'm going to take a darker grey. Now we need to add our shade, our shading in. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm going to be working almost in a ha hatched lines, very light hatched lines with this. So I'm going to add texture to the wheelbarrow with hatched lines there, and I'm going to do it back the other way as well. But I'm going to be darker over this side. Okay, because again, those shadows are going to be more this way. So a wheelbarrow will have little dinks in it, it will have marks. Mm -hmm. You'll have darker areas here, so I'm working in my crisscrosses of lines along the bottom, along the edge there as well, certainly under here. And I'm not being too careful. I'm doing it nice and quickly, so I'm not overthinking. I think you can really, really overthink colouring. Yeah. And as long as you step back now and then, just have a little look. I think, am I happy with that? And if you're not sure, I take my lightest colour again and I just go over, all over again, just to kind of smooth things out a little bit, blend it out and say, right, am I happy with that? So now that's starting mm. to look like rusty metal. And I would yeah. keep, again, I would keep building up my colours over and over again. So shall I just bring in one that I've coloured in completely? Now this did take probably a couple of hours in total wow. to get all of that done. But wow. it's all pencil. The only additional thing I've done, I'm not sure where I've put it, here it is, is my white pen. Mm -hmm. So I've come in with my white pen, things like on the rooster there. So on his tail, yeah. there's actually quite a bit of white on rooster's tail. So I've just gone in with my white pen and just added highlights there. And also things like, what is it, the headdress bit on a rooster? Oh, There's a name for it, isn't there? Get a oh. And, oh, not a wattle. No, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. No, that's a turkey, isn't it? So oh. there's areas on here <laughs> where, in an ideal world, I would have left it white. So the handles there, look, I'm just going to add little white highlights to the handles with a white pen. Uh, the whites of the eyes in the horses, as you're colouring, you can accidentally colour those in. So just, yeah, little little areas, the rim of the wheelbarrow, for example, yep. popping a white line. So we've added our highlights in, even to the tops of the carrots, because if they're good carrots, they should be shiny. So um, nice, nice, juicy carrots. Okay, so we've got that all coloured in. I've die cut that into a square. I've kind of used that blending out of colour mm -hmm. uh, theory that I did with the sheep, with the blue pen, but I did it with pencil. So I start darker near the image and I faded that out just by lifting your pencil up and getting a bit lighter and lighter. I've got a grey to map that onto, so I'll map that. And then I've got, this is actually an old Daisy May paper. Oh, okay, I've got lots of her pads. It is a textured pad, so it is just, sorry, not textured, a patterned paper pad and it's just like this gingham, mm. lots of different colours and I just thought that really works yeah. with the orange of the carrots. Mm. So I'm just going to add some ink around this quickly. And also, I don't know why, but whenever I think of gingham, I do think about sort of, Farms, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why is and that? Barn dances yeah, and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> I think with the the brown edging as well to this, it's going to work really well. Mm -hmm. um, because we're using a lot of neutrals, it's a good idea to pick a colour, just one complementary colour to pick out, or almost contrasting colour yeah. to stand out. So in this one, it's going to be the orange. Um, in the previous one with the sheep, it was a pink. So I use the pink in the flowers or that coral colour. Um, so yeah, while you're working with these animals, a lot of the colours will be neutral. So pick one colour, blue, green, whatever, it, whatever you fancy and use that for as many of the accents as possible to keep it all cohesive. Because I think otherwise you could end up going with all the colours and then it gets a little bit, a little bit scary. Um, just going to clean this a little bit because what I want to do is this is already cut to size mm -hmm. and I'm just going to add a tear in the top. I just wanted to make sure that the two were torn together and then I'm going to add a little bit of brown ink in there. I might make that a little bit longer actually. That's cool, it looks really rustic. Yeah, it just adds to that whole feel, feel of the farmyard and like you say the countryside, the rustic, the gingham, all of that. So. Now I can glue those two together. I just want to make sure that the, I mean, I should have glued them together first, but it doesn't matter. I've got the two layers there. Now, uh, this is my dried up one. This is my good one. I've actually got a stopper for my glue now. 
Oh, really? Which, yeah, I've not had before. Oh, well, I have. I lose them. Ah. But I've got one today, so I shouldn't have any dried up glue issues today, which I always have when I come here. I think everybody does. I, I think it's the studio. Lights or the... I think the dry air in yeah. here from obviously the air conditioning and the lights and everything, it just helps the glue dry super duper quickly. Plus, we're, we're concentrating so much on what we're doing for the demonstration, we don't think to re replace caps and glues and things. Yeah. So that, that's all my excuses anyway. <laughs> oh no, I like them. Um, garden twine or Perfect. this sort of twine is, yeah, again, same sort of feel. So I'm actually going to just wrap this round a couple of times. So three, I always work in odd numbers. So I've wrapped that round three times and I'm going to tie it here. Just roughly, you can keep the card flat as best you can. Uh -huh. It's very easy to over tighten and then end up with a bowed card. And you can reposition once it's all tied on there. So actually, that's not too bad mm -hmm. at all. Lovely. So on the back, if I'm happy with the positioning of that, on the back, I'm going to put my foam tape. Sure. And that will just hold everything, all of those strings in place. We don't actually need any glue on those. So one across there. If I was at home, I'd go all the way around the edge and a little bit in the middle as well, mm -hmm. just to secure that. But like I say, I'm going. I'm just going to because I was talking about the glues. I'm going to replace my glue, the cap on my glue. It's a habit I need to get into more. Just to take a second to do that. Yep. No worries. We're all good for time. Yeah. I don't know if we'll get time to stamp some of the others, but well, I've got might be able to. another hour anyway for the next collection because we're actually launching two collections I didn't today. realise that. I thought it was the same, so that's nice. good. So make sure you're tuning in at 10, everybody. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's another fantastic collection, but a very different, very different theme. Yeah. Although there are sheep, strangely <laughs> enough, sheep. believe it or not, but very cute, very different sheep. You'll, it will all become clear at 10 o'clock. Indeed. Yeah. Make sure you tune in. Yeah, I, I'm very lucky to be able to play and launch this collection. I'm, I'm ever so sad for Claire, but, you know, I benefit from it. Yes. <laughs> <Today>. <laughs> there we go. So matting that on with two layers of foam. The reason mm -hmm. I'm putting foam on this second layer as well and really lifting it up is because I've got the string underneath. If I was right. to put it on with wet glue, it would kind of hover over the string. Um, be a and bit lumpy bumpy. Yeah, it would. Lumpy bum is perfect word. <laughs> Thank you. You can take it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so just popping this on there. Look at that. And lastly, I've got a lovely little sentiment. It says, hey, thanks. I'm going to pop this one on as well. Now this just requires a tiny little bit of foam tape. So, oh, look, that fits perfectly. And I'm going to place that here. Now I'm going, I'm using a bit of white space, so I'm keeping this fairly plain, which is which is why I wanted to do the tear and the knot of um, string there as well. That's not quite straight. I'll have to take that off and re-straighten that. But it's not an upside down card, which I'm grateful of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just check that before I stand it up. Um, yes, yeah, so there's the horses all coloured in pencil, so you don't have to be... Oh, that's really wonky, isn't it? Um, you don't have to be an expert with alcohol pens or have lots and lots of expensive colouring pens. Uh -huh. Raid your children's or your grandchildren's colouring pencil jar instead. Yeah, I love that. Um, can, we, can I just say to you, they've been saying in my ear, and I totally agree, how can you say you don't colour or whatever? That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, enjoy it, enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. well, if, I, if I get the time, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. All right, then, so we'll finish off with some um, fabulous samples, and then we'll have a look at the uh, stamps themselves. So we've got our wonderful um, line dancing. Um, uh, <laughs> Charlotte's just said in my ear, this makes her think of a New Year's party. Is this what you're doing this year? <laughs> Barn dance. Oh, right. No, yeah, Julia, uh, lovely Julia Watts. Apparently she's having like a barn dance herself for her hey. birthday next year. <gasps> Must book a hotel. Anyway, <laughs> um, right. So, <laughs> so we've got uh, take, your par uh, take Your Partner. Uh, love that. Okay, they're now saying that this is Julia and Phil. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> I've seen Phil in a show like that, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, and then we've got our uh, shepherd there. I love that the sheep, if you look, he's just hanging his little paws over. 
You've got the two little dogs. He doesn't look like he's going to do very much, actually. He's got his little tongue sticking out. He's worn out. He's just been chasing those sheep up into the triangle, hasn't he? He's worn out now. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> and look, you're using the um, background papers as well that you've got. They're really perfect, aren't they? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then we've got our sheepies. Look, again, the more you look, she's got a hat on. We've got a flower in their hair. Bless her, bless her. They're just so cute. And thinking of you... <laughs> which is very clever. It's really good. I love all of these. Uh, then we've got our horses. So they'll give you great pleasure, really great fun. They're eating a lot of carrots and stuff. <laughs> That's a big barrel of carrots. The happy horses. Absolutely. I'm not even sure if those were actually sat there for the horses. They're probably being collected and the horses are munching on them without being known. <laughs> See, that's the thing, though. That's the lovely thing is you can really tell stories, yeah, can't you, with absolutely. it? Absolutely. Uh, then we've got our tractor. I love that. That's just such an impactful card. And that's got the thank you on. I love the little sentiments that you get with all of these sets as well. So it's all been really well thought out. You are simply the best. And he's very, very proud with his trophy there. Excellent. Uh, this next one, Scarecrow Kisses and Warmest Wishes. Love that. With our scarecrows. You don't see many scarecrows about anymore, do you? Oh, they have bird scarers now, don't they? Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, we we like still that. get them near me because I live in the middle of loads of fields. Oh, okay. Um, but a lot of farmers actually have bird scarers now. Oh, which are very I, noisy. I like them. I like... Oh, they're asking my ear what are bird scarers. Oh, they're sort of, they're just a noise. They're um, like a, a machine that makes a noise every few sec every few minutes and scares right. the birds off, so... Yeah, nothing to see, just a, a big bang. And you won't be able to sleep if you're around one. No. <laughs> uh, and then we've got our fabulous cows. Look at that. Yep, yeah, definitely. She's got to be Daisy. It says, happy birthday to Moo. I love that. <laughs> That's fab, isn't it? Um, and then last one that I've got here. Thanks so much. That's perfect. Look at all those apples that they've been munching on. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliantly coloured in as well. Okay, uh, so you have got your full collection. If you go onto the website, you can break it down into little bundles, but obviously you'll get that saving, uh, which carries over from all the little bundles. Um, so it's not just three pounds that you're saving, it's actually 15 pounds off this bundle. Uh, you're also, uh, you've also got this on FlexiBuy, two payments of 39 pounds and 95 pence if you want to spread that cost. Item number is 651328. As always, you can call us to place your order 01733 or shop online at thecraftstore.com. So we will see you at 10 o'clock. I'll be back at 10 o'clock <laughs> for school nativity. Ah, thank yeah. you. I was going to ask you, could you give us a little sneak peek? And if you've been having a look around the set, you'll have seen some of the samples that we'll bring forward a little bit later on. Thanks once more. You're very welcome. Lovely stuff. <laughs> Coming up next then, we are Sewing with Simplicity. That's our one day special. After that, we've got Bigger Stitches Quilting. And later, as we said, back with Lou. Hello, my name's Stuart, and I'm the Managing Director of Oakwood Archer. We specialise in high quality items brought into the UK from all over the world, including brands like Kaisercraft, Stampendous, and impression obsession. Our products include stamps, dyes, papers, buttons, trimmings, ribbons and album making kits. Just about everything you need to be a good crafter. In the foothills of Alnul, a lawless event unfolds. The craft store's sixth birthday, an exciting time beholds. Phil Martin and Indigo Blue, Heartfelt Creations, Zuri, and Crafts 2. With six pounds of credit, there'll be plenty to buy. With great one-day specials, the aces are high. With discounts and deals, with prices to amaze, join us for a hoedown for a wild seven days. From fabric to paper to glitter and pencils, pens and stamps, inks and stencils. 
Join us in August, a craft extravaganza. Happy sixth birthday, the Craft Store's Bonanza. Hi, my name is Blanche Siegmann. I'm the owner of the company La Blanche. The company La Blanche is a crafting company located in Germany. For over 20 years, I'm designing and selling stamps, paper crafting products and home decoration. As a passionate crafter myself, I make sure all our products are of highest quality and easy to use. We produce a whole range of products. We produce paper products. We have also shrink sleeves for your jars, glasses. We have home decoration products, paints and wall decals. Everything, the whole range of crafting we produce for you. I hope you enjoy watching us and crafting with La Blanche. Hello and a very good morning to you and welcome to the one day special. Now I've not worked with this lovely guest before but I'm having a good old natter with our lovely Jenny Raymond. Hello darling. Hello, good morning Fee. Very nice good morning. It's yes. so lovely to be with you. Absolutely. She's a font of information and I am, I'm, I'm, did you, you know, did you, the viewers know how you started out this journey in the sewing? Right, you want to know very quickly? Yes, yes? very, okay. yes, very I, quickly. this is the best story ever everybody. <laughs> Idle son. Didn't deliver newspapers that particular morning, so I do it for him. Last house on the round, and it's absolutely pouring down with rain, has no letterbox. So I banged on the door in anger. She opened the door, huge heap of fabric in her hand. I said, here's your paper. She looked at me, she said, do you fancy a coffee? Yeah, all right, yes, please. I went into her house, had to be polite about the fabric, what you do. I do patchwork. We fell to talking. She then said, I could actually do with some help, because she did classes. Yeah. And what she wanted was someone to sort of sweep the floor, cook the lunch. I'd been in the catering world, done hotels, etc., etc. So I said, well, I need a job. I'll help. Watch what she did. Thought, hey, I could do that. That's quite interesting. Did four workshops with a lady called Helen Deegan and then got into adult education, conned my way in. I got my book. I'd done me four workshops. I knew <laughs> all about it. Um, and did teach training, sitting gills, various this, that and the other. Ended up teaching the sitting gills, very far, you name it. Wrote various books, travelled around the world. And here I am with you today. Here she is this and morning. <laughs> Isn't that the best potted history? If you hadn't, if your son had got up that morning, you wouldn't have knocked on that door. You wouldn't have spoken to that lady. And who knows, this journey may never have begun. I think totally, that is a phenomenal totally. story. And it's been a fabulous journey. And I'm such a lucky lady because I have a great job that I like. I meet some super people. I yeah. go to some places I never actually see because you fly in, fly out. Yeah. Um, and then here I am having a chance to sort of strut in front of the camera. And we're going to talk about the one day special. And I'm going to. So if you've got any questions for our lovely Jenny, she is a font of information. She is the lady to ask. Now we've got a set of patterns here. Honestly, it covers the whole gamut. This is going to keep you busy for so long. We've got 14 piece pattern mega bundle. We've got dressmaking. We've got bags. We've got hairbands. We've got uh, uh, skirts. We've got. Um, oh, well, we've got everything in, in this lot. £59.99. Um, Basically, a lot of the, I'm going to go through the, the, the sort of the, the patterns, as it were, simply because a lot of these goes up to size 18, uh, size 21, size 26. So obviously it starts from size 8 upwards. So um, you've got a whole gamut here. You have you? indeed. And of course, one of the patterns is known as a hacking pattern where you literally cut bits off to suit yourself. Oh. They're all multi-sizes and they yeah. all do a wide range of basic yeah, clothes. So if you're yeah. in need of, and hey, let's face it, some of us have got a little bigger in the last few months. Um, the COVID-12, they're calling it. Correct. You might need to have a new skirt or you've got some fabric that's just oh. been knocking around. There's a lovely baby set there. Lovely. Um, and, and a nice pinny. Well, of course, you don't have to wear the pinny with the baby and that would be <laughs> the upside down. Version. Now that's an interesting frock because that's a sort of wrap around frock. Oh, yes, yes. Um, so and that's particularly go good or... if expansion has taken place. Yeah. So that's that, that's that lovely one as well, maybe to adapt for the beach and what have it you. Would isn't work it would very well for the beach. And then we come to one of my favourite sets here. So this, we, we said, could be not just a small, small size sewing machine, it, it could, could be a toaster. It isn't it, anything, it's a cover. Yeah. So you've got a tea cosy there, you've also got another smaller cover uh, that you could hang your tea cloth on, etc, etc. Or you could just use it as a smaller co um, cover for a small teapot. Then you've got the lovely big toaster cover. There's a mm. peg bag there and gosh, don't we, uh, mine are in a yogurt pot, so I'm going to make one of those. And then the thing that Fee was most entranced yes. about, the casserole carter. Now let me show carrying. you this because we've got some of these on display. You can see the lovely camper van here, the lovely cushion that Jenny's made. But this is genius. I was talking about my friend 
trying to carry a casserole in a giant IKEA bag. Other bags are available. And it's slopping around everywhere. So basically, the premise is it keeps it flat. You just open it out and ta-da! But you had a great idea for this, Jenny, didn't you? Because look at that mat. Yes. Fully washable, obviously. And you said about the kids' toys, didn't you, Jenny? Look, you can, you can, you, once you understand the principle, make yeah. it bigger. Kids can put their toys on it. Yeah. You then get fed up with the children play, pick up the toys, all the crayons, Sit, all the mess. Skip it all up. What about giving it a plastic lining? Yeah. And then the child can do all sorts of crayons and what have you make a mess you gather yeah. it all up hang it on the door job done i love that i think yep. that's absolute genius and that's the lovely tim holtz fabric we've got on the show as well so that's brilliant then another favorite of mine is the doggy the doggy um <laughs> yeah the doggy coat i just think that's it's just beautiful yeah, so many people fee have bought dogs now yes and the winter is coming they're going yeah. to need coats because yeah. these small dogs need a coat that's an idea for a craft sale. Why not set yourself up in business? You've got yes. the pattern, modify it, make one to suit for the Christmas ones. You know, the owner's dog. Yeah. Flog them. Yeah, and then you've got absolutely. a business going. And you can do all the different sizes there on the back as well. Uh, and then we've got the hairbands, we've got the hats, uh, we've got the lovely cushion and bl blanket and the pillow, I should say. Yep. Um, lovely little variations on a gorgeous little girl's dress there. What age does that go up to? Forgive me, everybody. I'm on to read. Uh, ba 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 ba. Ooh, to know. It says 1920. Oh, that's the chest. Oh, I think it says on the front actually. Oh, so I'm making life difficult for myself. I am. Yeah. There we go, Fee. US 12 to two to four. Yes. There yeah. we go. It's really simple for just read yeah. the instructions. <laughs> read the instructions. Yeah, it's always, like, always useful to read the it instructions. It is. Like it's, if it just says it on the screen, I'll, I'll make life difficult. It says it the... Why not with that bear? Yeah. You don't have to give it a, a funny front like that. You could put a really nice piece of the favourite fabric, perhaps from the child's first baby grow on the front or something like that. Then it's, you know, it's a comforting sort of a bear. You could personalise it with their initials, Correct. couldn't you? Lovely, lovely cushions and throw. This is the cushion we just showed you a moment ago that Jenny's done with the Tim Holtz fabric up there in the gorgeous gold and the beige. Uh, and then we've got bags and totes. So you see this bag? This was made, wasn't it? You were telling yes, me, Jenny? Yes, Ria. 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 Our buyer upstairs. Ria, Ria who does Ria. So made it out of PVC. Is that brilliant? Um, wrote, did some writing on the front. So yeah, she that could have been one of the pattern and yeah. did it. And she's not That's a stitcher bad. at all, at all. Yeah, I think that might have been using one of the crickets or one of those machines. Yep. And then lovely, more tote bags there as well. So you get all those patterns. We've got them two flexi by payments of £30. I love Jenny's idea of making to sell as well with the doggy coats, personalising them for Christmas and Halloween. People love that, don't they? Um, you're saving more than you're spending there. Saving £72, 032918. For me, it's worth it just for that casserole bag, quite frankly. Uh, that's the one day special. And I just, I love um, Jenny's idea of all the kids' toys. And then you've got that safe mat for them to play on. Um, now this, I'm going to ask about the bobbin winder. You, you showed this. This was very popular last night, Jenny. And I said to you, why would I need this if my sh machine winds bobbins? Because a lot of the time, your machine won't always wind the bobbin properly. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you've got a reel of thread that's pretty manky, doesn't fit on the machine, doesn't run. But you can put it on this, on the little spindle that has we have here. Yeah. So basically what you've got here is a portable bobbin winder yes it, you keep it beside your sewing machine because the number of times you think oh i just need another bobbin i can't be bothered to take the thread or oh, just use that reel of thread and because it's all threaded up on your machine you don't want to undo it and use the bobbin winder on exactly the machine, you can use this but many uh, i teach a lot and many machines don't wind the bobbin properly and if you find that your bobbin has actually wound at an angle mm. or is particularly loose i'm afraid your machine will not sew so well this little gadget will wind the bobbin perfectly. Very simple to use. Any reel of thread can be used. Just simply raise the spindle, stick the reel of thread on top. Now, I was using this reel of thread because this reel of thread oh. has a crack, manky yeah. bottom, yes. Mm. And if I put that on my machine, that's going to catch you. Place the reel of thread on there. Mm. Take an empty bobbin. It will just about do every single bobbin. It does all the bobbins that I've got. And I've done Elna ones, Singer ones, Bernina ones, Husqvarna ones, Faf ones, etc., etc. This is a new Elna one. And incidentally, just as an aside, please make sure that if your machine comes with plastic bobbins, you use plastic bobbins. If it comes with metal, you use metal. And make sure you put the right bobbin in the machine. It's no good trying to fit somebody else's bobbin bobbin in a different maker machine. Once you've done that, simply thread the little thread through the loop. She's got sticky fingers this morning. It's harder to do overhead. <laughs> it is hard to do overhead. It's also and, harder um, to do when your, your fingers are dry. There we are. So thread the thread through the loop, I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way. Round the little knob at the end there. Take it round here. Put that more into now, you can see it more. Round the 
this will pop in there a couple of times close up this little section got there the catch there yeah right and an put your there. finger on the oh, bottom oh wow and it you go. now it will go on winding until it's full oh so does it stop automatically it stops automatically it? if you don't want it full then you can just stop it at any time by just simply releasing that that's brilliant and if you want to start it again just hit that i must admit i have been on the same machine and then been lazy because i couldn't be bothered to um, <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> you've needed to change the bobbin and then just think oh. right and another thing to be aware of dear viewers yeah. is that please only put one thread on the bobbin so if you don't want a lot of thread don't fill the whole bobbin please yeah. don't do it my mother used to have 10 colors on there because oh. they all wind on at different tensions so oh. you can wind anything from your I've nylon filament Sorry? It's never even crossed my mind well, to do different go. threads. Um, you'll need to look at the other shows, because I'm not going to show you yet again, is yeah. Jennifer's <laughs> patent device for winding off the large cones of thread. Oh. Because you simply put that over the top, take your thread through the top <gasps> there, and wind it. All right. So this. look at the 6 o'clock and the 8 o'clock show last night. Did you discover so, that by trial and error? Well, because if you, tr you that doesn't fit, Of course not, no. So how are you going to... So how are you going to wind it? Uh -huh. That's genius. Right. Look at that. You Genius. See? Okay. Highly you... expensive bit of kit this. I I'm painted that idea. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> $17.99. Maybe, yeah, I've experienced that where it just winds it too fat around the middle yes. or on an angle. You get all it at the bottom. So, uh, and then been lazy. You know, you don't want to thread the whole machine. $17.99. All you need is two double A batteries. They just. No, no, no. No, it comes with it. Yes. Oh, yes. there we go. You don't even need that. But if you want to replace it, that's all it is after they've run out. But it comes with your double A batteries. So that slides in there nice and easy. The lid locks tight you've got your little carry handle there lovely and portable it's quite a fun thing to do i, I love winding bobbins i find it's it very therapeutic it's the children can do it but it's also a great present for a great seller. present yes. i mean somebody yeah. gave me one um which was lovely because in fact i already have one yeah but it was just such a nice gift to get yeah, absolutely. so you decide wind, wind your bobbins for properly brilliant Approaching 40%, it's proving very popular because I think we've all experienced that, that uh, bobbin nightmare. 146, 173, 1799, approaching 40%. Now, these templates were very popular, and I know um, our Jenny's going to hopefully look at these at some point in this hour. So if you've got any questions about the templates, please email us into studio at thecraftstore.com. Uh, this is a great price point. You're saving five pounds, and then you've got your easy quilting diamond and your triangular acrylic template bundle. Five pounds saving, nine pounds 98. How would I be using these, right. then, Jenny. these two actually go together because they both relate to 60 degrees and they, they end up as hexagons or parts oh. of hexagons. So if we look at the cushion cover here, yeah. this is your diamond shape that's being used there. Brilliant. And if you put three of them together, you get a hexagon oh, and it's yes. the classic shape that you could use for something called tumbling that block. Tumbling block, that's here. exactly what I was just thinking, yeah. There is your good old tumbling blocks. Yeah. Which, of course, you could make smaller because the template is multi-size. And if you made it smaller, you could end up with your tumbling blocks like that. Fab. It's simply the use of colour that will give you that three-dimensional effect. So it Great. just depends on which way you put it. So you've got the diamond, and it does a lot of other things as well. And then you've got the triangle. And six of those triangles will go together to make a hexagon. You could consider, and I'll show you on the 12 o'clock show, is taking a striped band and cutting out triangular sections and putting them together and you'd end up with something Ooh. like that. Oh, I love that. So that's literally using the 60 degree triangle. It also makes bunting, six 60 degrees make a hexagon. So you've got the opportunity to mix and match with the two templates because they both fit and work together. They're acrylic, they're six millimeters deep, so you can use your rotary cutter very easily out the side of it. Yeah. They've got measurements on them that give you your finish measurement and your cutting measurement. You simply lay them on a strip, cut down the sides of it and bobs your own you've got hexagons triangles diamonds whatever shapes you want to make love those they sound very nifty approaching 40 percent as well so please don't miss out on them what a great price point nine pounds 98 hopefully see some of those in action later on eight one zero one seven eight definitely gonna see those in the 12 o'clock show and again this was a great bundle boy oh boy you get value for money in this set so this is your easy quilting set um, and you are getting uh, that beautiful uh, dress well you tell me you right, tell me okay. Jenny, what we so got two completely different sets of templates there, yeah. which I've actually 
split. You have. So that the one that you've got there, the initial one, you've got a 45 degree diamond, which yeah. is not the same as a 60. Okay. You've also got a half square triangle, which is the little one there by your hand now. Yeah. And you've got something called a quarter square triangle. Now, right. these will all fit together to make a wide variety of patterns. And the patterns, or some of the patterns, because there's a myriad of patterns, can be found in the booklet, which will explain fully how it works. Ooh. They are particularly sized, so they'll fit on something called a jelly roll, and there are other names for it, sometimes called a design strip, etc., etc. So you have an absolute wealth of patterns from just those three templates. Gosh. Along with this, you've got something called the Dresden plate. Again, right. another multi-sized template. Yeah. And the Dresden plate does many different, it, basically it's a circle. It's wedges that make up a circle, but you could use a quarter of the circle, and that becomes the classic grandmother's fan design. Whether you choose to use it as a plate, whether you choose to use it as a quarter plate, or whether you choose to just take the pieces and put them together in a much more modern way, Ooh, I like as I have on this piece here, where you've just got the Dresden plate template laid one way and yeah. back the other one way. It's a table runner if you want. It could be a quilt. You don't have to make circles with the Dresden plate. So it's another very good template. For those who are starting patchwork, it's a nice set to have. It's also an easy to carry around set. It's one of those things you're not ever going to want to draw up a resin plate, I can assure you. It's <laughs> done for you. Seam allowances, it's added on. All you've got to do is cut up pieces and sew it together. Fantastic. That, that's, that's brilliant. I, I love that. Was that used for this one? It was Jenny? indeed. So yeah. that one is a Dresden plate with a bound edge. Yeah. And then over here, I have a Dresden plate where I've done the classic pointy edge to it. Right. Okay. And they all have circles in the middle. And fortuitously, we have a circle cut template on the show as well. Ooh, because the yes, one thing do. fee you have to have is a round center. If you right. ain't got a round center, then people look for the imperfections. So the center must be round. So we have got those with our lovely scalloped uh, ones there, there at the end of the counter there. So this is a great bundle, approaching half a stock, approaching half a stock gone, proving very popular. And I know uh, Jenny's going to work with us as well this morning. 667-587-589, sorry, 667-589, £15.98. Look on the website, four set circle, um, beautiful, uh, and the clamshell, that's it. They're on there as well. We've got rotary cutters, the self-healing mats. Uh, we've got other rulers on there as well. Um, so have a little look there. There's our circle acrylic template. And then we've got also our, our lovely scallops there as well. I think there, there might be a cheeky little bundle of those. The, 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 I keep calling it scallops, clams. Then we've got the, the, the lefty righty square. Oh, the easy rule. Um, and uh, what's that one I like um, that's on there as well? The slide along log cabin. Hopefully we'll look at that at some point as well. So lots of fantastic rulers there to grab a hold of. Look at that saving there, the template, the circle log cabin one there. It's £26.98, £13.48. Absolute billy bargain that. Uh, so yeah, shop ahead on the web and... Uh, We'll have a look at that clam bundle. We're going to get that up on the, on, on the, on the, on the screen there as well. There it is, £21.98. So that, that's a great bundle, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a yeah. bundle. Right. I thought I ought to show you what to do with those three quilt. templates. I was, you know, I taught lovely. myself to quilt. That'd be lovely. So I have the three templates here. I have this particular one, which is called a mini companion angle. If I put that on there, you can see the black writing much better. In actual fact, it's what's known as a quarter square triangle. In other words, four of these make a square. Mm. You have, in addition to that, something that has says mini easy angle on there. Well, again, let me put it on with the background. You can see this is actually a half square triangle. And two of those will make a square. So we have four of those yeah. make a square, mm -hmm. two of those make a square. Yes. And they actually fit together. So if you put a one of that Ooh. a quarter one beside um, the half square triangle, they will fit together. So we've got things like the flying goose, and I'll show you in a moment. Mm. In addition to that, you have a 45 degree diamond. And there is your 45 degree diamond. Now they're all designed to fit, even better if I have it the right way up. They're all designed to fit on a two and a half inch wide strip, which of course is the classic design roll, jelly roll, call it what yeah. you will. So I've cut out some of these pieces in just two different colors to really show you the variety of shapes you can get out of it. So if I deal with the quarter square triangle first, suppose you cut out a load of these and they get cut out. If I arrange them like this, you'll see how they get cut out. You take your strip, lay the template on the top, cut one out there, and then flip template round, cut another one, cut another one, etc., etc. Mm. 
So if I do four of these, say in two different colours, I can put them together and they will make a square. Ah. And instantly you have all sorts of patterns that you mm. could create just literally from that. Now that's a classic design called broken dishes. <laughs> but you can build on it. Now if you didn't want to do that, and think you could use scraps. You don't have to use a whole strip. You could just put this template on any scrap you yeah. like and cut it out. So we could put those four together to make a shape. You might say, OK, what if I took one of these and two of the half square triangles, the easy angles? What happens then? Well, I could put one on one side and one on the other side. And I then got the classic Ooh. shape called a flying goose, Oh, okay. which could be used as flying geese. Let's have the another geese, one. Here. Yes. What was the one called? The broken saucer? Uh, broken dishes. Broken dishes. I've never heard of that, Jenny. That's I love it. this. There you oh, are. Yes, You've there's got, our flying there's geese. There's your flying yeah. geese, which indeed could be used as a border and could be put this way. If you wished. And of course, these could, I'm going to sneeze in a minute. So if you... Oh, bless you. <laughs> bless you, my darling. It's great, for, it's great yes. to get the most out of your material, isn't it? Though? It's really thrifty. It is. So the, you could arrange it like that. You could say to yourself, how about a star? Well, let's have a star. Ooh. So we're going to use this as the background. I'm going to start the star here. And one there. It's the Arctic conditions in here, Jenny. That's what it is, darling. <laughs> it's probably the dust from the fabric. <laughs> she, she turned it up for us because our mouth was absolutely frozen. <laughs> Helps if you put it the right way up. Sorry, sneezing has thrown me completely off track. <laughs> So where's another pink one? There's another pink one. Put one down here. I think what is the great thing about... Um, get them up the right way. It's too early in the morning. And one of those goes there. And we need a further pink one to go here. And I'll fill the middle in in just a moment. Yeah. Now that's that. Um, that's that. I'm determined to have them that way up. They're mm -hmm. all laughing at me. Put it up the other way, woman. Put it up the other way. Did I have another one of those somewhere? No, I didn't. Let it's me just... cut one more. Right, let's show you how to cut them. Okay, so That's many it. different patterns, isn't there? Oh, Watching absolutely. You have those... Right, I have a strip. I've got mine folded double. Take the template, lay the template on the strip. Yeah. And to cut that little selvage off to begin with. And this is the little right-angled one, isn't it? That's it, little right-angled one, absolutely. Let's go and put that on there. There, are, There is another one somewhere. It's probably doubled up as a friend. Yeah. Because I always cut everything out in pairs. Right, so there we have a star shape, and I could fill the centre in literally with whatever I happen to fancy. So I could fill the centre in with the broken dishes one. Yeah. That there and there. And I'm going to need two more pink ones. So get to my fabric again. Let's have a couple of pink ones just to show you how to cut it out. So will it get two out of that one? Yes, I will. This is the, just uh, the, the large there. triangular one, yeah. And flip it round and just cut up the other side. So these could be cut out literally almost on your lap. One up there. Yeah. Up the way with that. Let's cut it up there. So two and a half strips. Two and, two and, and a half strips. strips. Yeah. Fill that in there. One of those in there. And then I could, if I wished, simply put two more half square triangles together to fill in the yeah. square on the corner. Or I could cut myself a two and a half inch square. Okay, it's a boring design because I'm not using enough colours. But just to show you the potential, and if you don't like any of that and you want to use the di diamond, the diamond will make into an eight pointed star. So if you take Ooh. eight of these and lay them out, you will get, and it's all in the ah. little book. The yeah. eight-pointed star, and then I'll show you how to fill the corners in in just a second. So we've got these in our in our pattern booklet as Absolutely. well, which accompanies the, the, the templates. Oh, fantastic! Go. The star pot holders. I've got a pattern for. But it doesn't have placements. to be a pot holder. It could actually be, <sighs> and then you'll end up with an octagon if you add the quarter square triangles into all of the sections around the edge here. The maple leaf runner. I love the broken dishes baby quilt as well. That's so cute. There we go. And the last one goes in there. So there is your potential. So you can just take these. You could take just the diamond and put a half square triangle on either end. There is a pattern you could create. So from those three templates, the design potential is absolutely amazing. And the churn dash, that, that's haunting me now. Because yes. I remember the churn dash coming up once when we were doing blocks. And I was like, what's the churn dash? And all the lovely viewers were emailing me in and telling me, oh, Fiona, it's this, this, this. I was intrigued by the name. And we've got uh, finishing your quilt information in there as well. Uh, the rolling star quilt. Isn't that beautiful? Going back to what... Uh, 
um, Jenny was just talking about. Isn't that fantastic? Gorgeous quilt. I, that one. I think so. So again, those are 45 degree diamonds um, and your half square triangles just fitted together to make that very simple design. Gorgeous. And there's my, my lovely uh, the star pot holders. We've got the, the, the flying geese placemats. This is all in the, the broken dishes baby quilt. I'm never going to forget that now. And, the broken and just dishes. use your scraps up. Yeah. Because you can see there she's used up scraps or he's used up scraps. Yes. Whoever made it used up scraps. And these are great little templates just for that small project. You're going away on holiday. You want holiday? Do we actually ever get to go away on holiday? <laughs> um, holiday or if we're having a staycation, which I now know means staying at home. So you <laughs> could treat yourself these templates, get it out, sit quietly in the evening, watching us on the telly for more inspiration, and actually just simply sew some pieces together and create a wide series of designs. Fantastic. That's your easy quilting bundle there. There it is on the screen. Over half has gone. You've got six projects in the quilts one, and you've got another six in the Dresden Design quilts as well. So, and all all of those fantastic four templates aren't they absolutely fantastic yeah i love those brilliant um six six seven five eight nine yeah brilliant 15 pounds 98 16 pound saving and that's just scratching the surface with our jenny right one day special yes my favorite the casserole bag um <laughs> Yes, I'm just, I just think that's just the best. It's just the best. It's often the simplest things, isn't it? You are right. Because it's just the best, Jenny. You know, it's, it's almost worth it. But just to get the pattern, look at the yeah. principle. See yeah. how it's made. Make it bigger. Yeah. Um, use the idea for all sorts of other things. Oh. And it will be... Um, Fantastic. The toy bag is just brilliant because heaven knows the kids always have so much gubbins, don't they? And especially, uh, you know, you want to put something down, you, you look at a table and you think, ooh, that's a bit unsavory. I don't like the look of that. Uh, you've kind of got your mat there ready to go and keep it all nice and hygienic and then take it home and wash it. And they can keep all their gubbins on it because the kids always have loads of little things to play with. And uh, yeah, it's like an instant little table mat to go with your, your casserole dish or your... Your kids, kids' gubbins. Absolutely yes. love that. It's one of a plethora of patterns in this set for the one day special. £59.99. And that's a jolly good word for plethora. plethora. You like that one? Wednesday today. Yes, yes Wednesday I liked your morning. word earlier. What was it uh, <laughs> when I was talking about waxing lyrical? What did you say? Oh, crikey. I've, I've, oh, it's such not a good word. I can't remember there. now. <laughs> <laughs> Two flexi by famous of £30. Zero three two nine one eight. You've got skirts. You've got tote bags. Hats, blankets, cushion covers, wrap around dresses. We've got sizes from eight up to size 26. You know, you can adjust there. Um, the hacking one there that you can just adjust there as well. The doggy coat is one of my favorites as well. Jenny was saying, start a little business, personalize uh, little Christmas doggy coats and uh, uh, I don't know, Halloween ones. People love to dress up their little animals. Well, you could have also the tote bag to match your dog coat. Oh, you see? That's very swish. So That's very swish. Wouldn't, wouldn't that look amazing? Oh, well. <laughs> look at look around your Burberry dog coat with your bag. And, and your hat. You see, you have your hat. Yeah. You have your frock. Oh. And I mean, you can always see the sort of the vintage simplicity the lady in the full skirt going down there with the dog on the. <laughs> Um, on the it. end of the leash and the bag and the little hat. I mean, hey, come on. It's a great set of patterns. Um, <laughs> if you don't want to use them all, well, give it to a friend. Absolutely. That's Secret the beauty Santa, of it. Wrap it up with a fat quarter or a square oh, of fabric. That's a great idea. And then there you are. Yeah. Here's a pattern. Lovely. That's a great idea. I love that idea of wrapping it up individually with a fat quarter. £59.99, 14 patterns there to indulge and enjoy. 032918. The bobbin winder. I'm intrigued by the bobbin winder. I love the bobbin winder. It's been very busy. Comes with your two AA batteries. Uh, you will never again experience a bobbin that hasn't been wound correctly. 40% has gone. Uh, as Jenny said, you know, a beautiful little gift idea. Because not all the machines wind your bobbin evenly throughout. Even the larger bobbins. Watch the show last night with our Jenny. She created a lovely uh, invention there for the large, large uh, overhead, the overhead... Uh, the spools. Yeah, yeah, the spools, yeah. And you just press it, you lock it into place and uh, off, off you go. So lovely and easy, but you get a, a lovely even bobbin every time rather than having to rethread your machine every time you want to wind a bobbin. 17 99 great gift idea or stocking filler for that sewer in your life. Or if you're thinking, oh, I've experienced that on my machine fee, never winds properly. 146173. These are very popular as well, our two double templates as well. They work together, uh, they can create all sorts of different patterns. What a great price point, over 40% gone, £9.98, £5 saving. I think we're going to... Do you want to see how the, the diamond works? I do, yes. yeah, well, I'd love to let's, actually, let's Jenny, 810178. She's going to get the, the diamond out. I was going um, to do the slide along log cabin, where we can equally easily do... Oh, we can go back to that. that. We'll have a look at the slide along log cabin is another ruler we've got on the okay. show as well. Right, well, let's do the diamond. 
So the, di the diamond can be used for the classic tumbling block. Oh, yes. The classic tumbling block is basically made out of three different colors, a light, a medium, and a dark. If you take three strips of any size you like, it matters not the size because the template is actually a multi-size template. And if I can find where I put it, so you just talk from it while I pick it up That's from the right. floor here. There it is. And let's rescue a tumbling block to show you the very simplest of tumbling blocks. This is a great set, but there's nowhere to put stuff. <laughs> and I have so much stuff. Okay, so classic tumbling block. And notice you've got the steps here, and if I turn it round and put the green on the top, you've got the steps there. And if I turn it round again and put the blue on the top, can you see the illusion of yeah. steps? And that is created by taking three colours. So I've got three different colours here. I'm going to lay them all out and have them all right side up. doesn't really matter. Eulogise, that was the word. Eulogise. Eulogise. Right. Well, well remembered, Fee. <laughs> Where's my rotary cutter? Let's just trim the end off. I've got a nice straight end, but so you'll think I'm cheating. Right, on the ruler, it has a whole series of different measurements. And it tells you what to cut. So it says if you want to end up with a one inch finish, you cut a one and a half inch strip. If you want to end up with two inch finish, you cut a two and a half, a two inch finish strip, etc., etc. So it tells you exactly what mm. size strip to cut. So I've cut two and a half inch strips, which will end up as a two inch finished size. Bring the ruler right to the edge of the fabric, so you don't want to waste any fabric at all, keeping the fabrics aligned with the bottom of the ruler, the template, call it what you will. Guard off your rotary cutter. And incidentally, I believe we do have these very small cutters on the show. They are actually very good for do, just yes. small um, you know, cuts that you might want to make or working in a small area. Having cut the end off there, if you take the fabric and turn it round, the ruler then comes in from the left-hand side. And as I said yesterday, you'll remember this, I am right-handed. So fabric's got an R in the middle, it'll be on the right. The ruler has an L in the middle, it comes in from the left. Oh. Slide it in, and I'll show you for left-handed people in just a second. When it's covering up the two, when it's still aligned with a two and a half inch line here and here, you know you've got a nice correct size diamond. So cut up there. So that's you want to make another two inch diamond. Correct. Right, finish. It's a finished two inch yeah. diamond. Gotcha. Replace the template and cut again. So mm. just check it aligns with all the lines. So that's for right handed people. If you were left handed, and mm. I can't cut left handed, I'm just not strong enough. Take the ruler, place it on the top, and cut the angle to begin with. And then you will simply need to turn the fabric round, flip the ruler over, sorry, and use the ruler upside down, and then just cut like that. Okay, okay so you can still yeah. use it with your righty or left hand. You just have the ruler up the other way. So that there's your two and a half inch line, yeah. and cut. When you cut that lot, move it along, cut that one. Gotcha. And left-handed people can forget can call this fabric material cloth what you like just remember this is a ruler and it comes in from the right rougher right <laughs> <laughs> okay so how do you arrange them if you then take your three shapes and lay them out you could have say orange on the top yellow on one side green on the other side and then we stitch them together using a y seam and don't say why the reason why it's a y seam is there is the letter y mm. and Y seams are very simple to do, providing you remember you don't sew the seams in the center to the very edge of the fabric. Oh. And there's a mythical dot, there's a dot you can often put. Oh. If you take the bottom two of our tumbling block, put them right sides together and mark your seam allowance with a dot, you do it quite large. This dot is a quarter of an inch in from this side mm -hmm. and a quarter of an inch in from that side because mm. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. As these are all the same shape, you could actually use any seam allowance you liked, and that dot would be at your preferred seam allowance. So if you wanted to do half an inch, why, I don't know, but you could, you'd put the dot half an inch in. Mm. All the sewing will start on the dot and mm. sew out. That's the easiest way to do it. If you're hand sewing, I'd start on the dot and sew out. If you're machine okay. sewing, stick it underneath the machine, drop the needle down into the dot so you know where you're going to start, Lower your presser foot once the needle's down and set off and sew down the seam. 
when you get to the bottom, really, and Fee doesn't know about donkeys, so we won't tell her about those yet, a donkey is not useful. I don't know about why scenes. I'm not I'm, I'm intrigued. <laughs> OK, so I've started on the dot and I sewed down there, leaving a little gap. The Y seam is such an important seam to know in the patchwork world because so many designs have a Y seam in them somewhere. I'm going to now insert this into that seam. Mm. I tend to work on the left hand side, so I'll take this little Charlie, lap him over and line up the two fabrics right sides together. Mm -hmm. Flip it over and I can see where my seam started last time. Mm. I'm going to sew from there outwards. So Back underneath the, the press of foot. Okay. Drop your needle down at the start of the seam. Uh -huh. Lower your press of foot. Oops, Daisy. Remember which machine I'm on. And proceed to the end. If you've got a lock stitch, it's quite a good idea to lock the stitching at the beginning of all these seams. Okay. Right, all I'm going to do now is just move those threads out of the way, is twiddle the remaining piece round and then I have a choice. I could either sew from the centre out, starting on that piece, uh -huh. or turn it over, and I prefer to do this, is sew from the centre to oh, the middle, sweet. so from the outside to the middle, and stop on the dot. Okay. So just flip him out the way there. Oh. Start on the outside edge. Sew up to the dot. Stop on the dot. Do not go even one stitch beyond the dot. It's do got not. to stop on the dot. Right. Just have faith. Do as you're told. OK, so stop on the dot, move that thread out of the way. Got caught in there. Oh. It's not knotted in there. I think my machine's having a, a funny few minutes at the moment. If I now turn it over, mm -hmm. there are my diamonds all together. Oh. Apropos the seams, what you do with the seams is fan them out. Right. And in the middle, they just sort of squidge round in the centre. The tumbling block is now ready to almost be stitched into a traditional heap. Oh. I just need to make one more there. And then when I come to sew these together, and these are press, is you would start stitching by lining up on the seam there. And remember, we don't sew right to the very edge. So you start on the seam, go down there. That will give you the chance to insert another one ah, into the top there. So it's right. all Y seams. And I need to give that a quick press okay. in a minute while Fee tells you about something else. Lovely. Fascinating. I've never seen a Y seam. Uh, approaching half the stock gone. So if you've got any questions for Jenny, she's here with the one day special. She'll be with me again at 12 o'clock. Email us into studio at thecraftstore.com or let us know on the face cloth page because um, now is the time to ask. A wealth of information. It's fascinating. £9.98 for this double acrylic bundle. We haven't even got to the triangle yet. What did you say the triangles did as well, Jenny? Well, the triangles? triangles? Well, I'll show you on the 12 o'clock show because they basically will fit together to make it. Well, let me just cut out six. Oh, I'll keep hey, interrupting a bless. So she's Come trying on. to do a job and I keep interrupting. I know, I'm trying, I'm trying to find Jenny? What's that for, Jenny? And right, I just have to find the triangle, which is also on the floor. I think this is just such a great bundle. 810178, you've got a £5 saving. Uh, I am keeping a busy, bless her. Oh, I, I, I was with Jenny for the day. I love endless questions. <laughs> Endless oh, questions. Oh, She'll be okay. saying, please don't put me on that girl again. She's he's talking. I haven't really shown you what to do. I've got my three strips. And again, they're all right side up. It matters not. Put the template on. And again, I've lined it up with a two and a half inch mark because these were two and a half inch cut strips. Cut one of those. Flip it over. Fabric on the right. Ruler on the left. If you're left-handed, it just works the other way up and cut. Now, it's much easier now, rather than turning the template round, is just to flip the fabric over. The fabric replace the template and I'm going to show Fee how six of these will fit together to make a hexagon so one of those one of these one of these one of those one of those and one of those now I could also fit these together to make diamonds so they could go together like this they could go like this and I could actually make tumbling blocks out of diamonds turn it around so you could, well, that's oh. much the same as it was before, wasn't it? What a total load of rubbish, Jennifer, talk sometimes. I can't, uh, <laughs> no, we've had an email in from Julie who says, this lady, referring to our lovely Jenny, is phenomenal. And what an honour it is to be taught by her. Uh, Julie's just emailed in. Well, that's very nice of you, Julie. It was, it was exact, having just moved it around, it's exactly the same as it was before, but never mind. <laughs> no worries. OK, let, let me show you something different. You could have them as a row, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> 
This is the trouble. Viewers, you have no idea of the stress it is working on the television, knowing every single mistake is being watched by eagle eyes who again say, pounce, this woman is ridiculous. Not at and all. doesn't know what she's talking out about. So you could have it as a rope. So Lovely. use up your scraps. Yeah. Make them into hexagons. Make them into half hexagons. It's a plaything. I'll show you what to do with a striped strip at the 12 o'clock show. Lovely. I'll have a quick recap. Go down the counter. We'll come back to Jenny. I'll give her time to breathe. Bless her. £9.98 for the double of those. Thank you, Julie, for that lovely email. You can ask questions or you can or you can wax lyrical and, and, and tell us how lovely she is. I don't mind. She is lovely. We know that. 810178. Um, yeah, back to our double bundle. I'm going to call this the mega bundle because it is mega. What a saving. You've got those four templates. You've got those two uh, quilting books there with loads of projects, 12 projects in there as well. You've got a £16 saving. So it's 50% off, £15.98. You've got your right angle. You've got the, that little, little uh, mini triangle there as well. You've got your diamond and you've got your Dresden uh, star there uh, template. Over half a stock gone, 667589. Let's move to some of the bigger rulers as well, because I know Jenny's going to be working with these as we go through as many. If I don't keep interrupting and ask her, do this, Jenny, do this, Jenny. Uh, this is the essential, so essential um, template bundle. So you have got three rulers here. Uh, now, this one is called this large square. I'm doing, a, I'm doing a Richard there. The, the large... large square is its one of the most useful tools that I have, and the long ruler. I would not be without either of them. Okay, so that great long ruler fits half a width of... A width. Regular fabric is 44 inches. If you right. fold it in half, that ruler fits right across it. So you could Gosh. easily cut a straight strip with that ruler. It measures every uh, quarter and eighth of an inch up to six and a half inches. It's wow. one of those things, if you started patchwork and we're going to do it seriously, you need one of those. Got it. In addition to that, you need a square. Yeah. Many patchwork blocks, and indeed, of course, for your um, paper crafting, it Ooh. is an imperial measurement. So if you're working in imperial measurements, it's all there. You could cut paper with it. Well, I don't think it just fabric could be paper. Dressmakers like these big rulers because they can cut a straight line. Soft furnishers like these big rulers because that's absolutely great. With one of those squares on the corner of your curtain and your ruler, you can get a nice good straight line to <coughs> level off um, curtains and things like that. So they're useful for all trades. Plus, you've got that triangle. Now, that half square triangle has the seam allowances fitted in. So if you cut any strip and then cut two half square triangles, they will fit together to make a square. Um, the seam allowance is being included up the center, and it will cut any size from, I think it's two inches, right up to ten and a half inches. So you could just take half square triangles, sew them together, as I've got on the quilt that's here, um, over there, if the camera can come to this one. Along a bit, can we see it? Can yeah, we're just coming to you now. Our, our robotic there we camera's go. a bit... Fantastic. Uh, there we go. And that literally was just half square triangles That's stitched lovely. together arranged as a pinwheel and then you make the blocks up you sew I the like pinwheels that. together and you've got a quilt beautiful all three of those thank you jenny 36 pounds 97 978747 uh, i know we're going to look at this one so i won't uh, say too much about this because this is the log cabin slider one uh, and then we've also got our, our gorgeous um quarter circle there as well a and b in the blocks there so that's 13 pounds 48 i know we're going to look at those so i'll leave that one there 643824 and then We've got a bundle. Now, this is a great price point because this is your, your, yeah, your lovely clamshell. I keep calling it the scallops. This is your clamshell and the circular one. Um, this is a bundle. You, you can get them separately, but, of course, the saving is in the bundle. Um, we're just going to get this. Look at this price point coming up. Yeah, £17 saving. Notoriously difficult shape there. £21.98. Jenny was talking earlier about you need a perfect circle there. We were looking at some of those quilts with the Dresden uh, template there as well. 059322. The circle individually is £21.99. So you're actually saving a penny by having the bundle. There we go. And then you end up with your clamshell. Absolutely. What gorgeousness can right. we do with that, Jenny? Clamshells. OK, let's show some clamshells. Right, there Lovely. we have the classic clamshell where they're arranged in rows. But you might not want to do that. Who wants to do that sort of a thing? You ah, might want to do it as the OG, you see? Yeah. You could arrange it like that. You might not like that at all. You might want to play with it. And there we are playing with the oh, clamshells. I like that. Okay. And then I decided you could actually make, and for some reason when I did this initially, I called it a poppy. Now, come on. Okay, Jennifer, I know you don't know much about gardening. This is a pansy made out of clamshells. Um, if we don't have time this morning, we'll certainly do it on the 12 o'clock show. You Clam could go poppy with the red, couldn't you? Yes, yes, yes. you could do. 
Um, so it's basically, it's a shape. It's a great thing for hand stitches. And with it, you get the circle cut. And of course, as we discussed about circles, if you ain't got it round, it looks awful. Circles mm. have to be round. You can cut quarter circles, half circles, and whole circles with the circle cut in a variety of different sizes. So it's just two useful tools to have. And as Fee said, hey, come on for an extra penny. You an extra penny? <laughs> You're saving a penny. So why would you so just go you for the one? You don't want the clamshells. Give them Gift to somebody it. else. Well, with a lovely fat quarter. Keep the circle cut. <laughs> <laughs> £21.98. It's just an amazing price point. And hopefully at 12 o'clock we'll look more of that as well. 059322. You can shop in the head as well. What, what are we looking at then? Well, let's look at the slide along, slide along. cap. Yeah. Lovely, Jimmy. Because this is, if you're a beginner or you have difficulty cutting things the same number of times, you cut the wrong size piece. This is going to make a simple log cabin block, ending up as a 10 and a half inch square, raw edge to raw edge. So there is your block. You could use up scraps. You could just use two colors. You could use one cut, not one color, be ridiculous. You could use a variety of colors. So I've got three here. The log cabin design traditionally will have a center square, which will not be the same color as the other two. It can be, but doesn't have to be. And technically, this would represent the fire, and this would be the light coming out from the fire, and this would be the dark at the back of the chimney. Oh. Often that square is red. Okay, so how do we use a slide along log cabin one? On it are a variety of measurements. The first measurement will say the center square. And you're going to need to cut two of that. In fact, you cut two of just about everything. The center square, choose the color. So I'm going to have orange for my center square. I'm going to take from the other color a green and have a second square. So I need two of the center square pieces. You could use your jelly roll, your design strip. You could cut two and a half inch strips. And thankfully, this ruler actually measures two and a half inches. So all oh, you've got to do is good. fold the fabric, cut along the side of the ruler, and it's the right size as well. Brilliant. So I've got my two fabrics here together. I'm going to t start off with fabric on the right, ruler on the left, two and a half inches, center square, cut. Fish bosh. Right. Having done that, put those to one side. You're now going to take your third color, in my case, yellow, and I can use up this scrap of green and lay it on the top there. And in actual fact, I can use that scrap of green a little bit later on, because I can see that will make a longer strip. So I'm going to use this bit. Let's put those two together. Two fabrics right sides together, and I'm going to slide it along to the next measurement. It's now four and a half inches. And I've got one yellow, one green. Take it out of the way. I'm now going to slide it along for the next measurement, mm. and that is going to be six and a half inches. But hey, look, I've got a scrap here. Let's not waste that little bit. Put that out of the way, and we'll use this bit. And that means I can save that scrap of fabric. Two at six and a half, out the way. I'm now going to have two at eight and a half, so I'll use the longer section of that and the bit of the yellow I've got left and slide it along to eight and a half, and there's the eight and a half inch one. And then you probably are not going to want two of the ten and a half. It will depend on how you start your design, but worth cutting two of the ten and a half. Can I get a ten and a half out of that? No, I can't. I can get a ten and a half out of the yellow. And then I'll cut another bit of the green. So slide it right along to get the full length of it, ten and a half. So there's my ten and a half in yellow. Where's another bit of green? Another bit of green there. I can get ten and a half inches out of. There's the green. Let's have the green to hand. So I want a ten and a half inch strip. And I could just take this ruler, literally, lay it on the fabric. I want the full size of the ruler, so I'll just cut round the ruler. That's fantastic. You, you may not need this last one, and it does depend how you start off, but you will use it at some point, so pop it to one side. Okay. How it begins is right back to the very beginning again. Take your two squares, and they get stitched together. So you stitch orange to green. When we've done that, we're going to, as we've got a green one here, is take a four and a half inch green and place that one there. You tend to work round in either clockwise or anti-clockwise fashion. I'm now going to use a yellow one there, and I'll then go to the next yellow one, which will be the six and a half inch one. And if we put this block like this, you can see how it works. So there's my green, my green, my four and a half inch green, my four and a half inch yellow, my six and a half inch yellow, and my six and a half inch green mm -hmm. goes down there. Yeah. I will then go, because it's L for log cabin, to my eight and a half inch green there, and strangely enough, I'll have an eight and a half inch yellow up there. And then I'm going to finish it off with a ten and a half inch yellow along the top there. And that will make your log cabin block. 
Wow. That Coordinate really seam allowance and your seams go towards the outside edge. They just do. So what could you do with it? Let's move it out the way. And there are instructions, incidentally, for those who are thinking, oh, I'll never remember all that. On the back of the packet, you will find there are instructions. And there is a great deal of other instructions on the net for you to watch if you wish. Log cabin blocks, once they're made up, you play. So you could play with them and have them going downwards in sort of a step design, like this working across your quilt. You can either go like that, or you could have oh. it like that, stripes across there. You could oh, have it so oh. all the greens go together in the middle. It's when you've made the blocks up. May I suggest you play? Yeah. And you can play, you have that, you have all the pinks in the middle. You can also do another design with this particular template called courthouse steps, which is subtly different. And courthouse steps will have three of the two and a halves in the center, two six and a halves in one color, two six and a halves in another color, and two ten and a halves in one further one. So you could vary the design. You can have courthouse steps, you can have bog standard log cabin, you can play. It's a very useful ruler just for doing things like your obviously slide along log cabin. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. I love that ruler, isn't that fantastic? And then you've also got added to it, and I, I'm, I really don't have a scooby about what we do with these. Oh, right, uh, do you want the quarter circle? Well, yeah, but I also want to mention Jenny's books are on the website as well. So this little set, and uh, Jenny's going to talk about the little um, um, quarter circle and quarter block, is £13.48 with your lovely log cabin slider one, 643824. I'm just going to quickly mention Jenny's book because she hides a light under a bushel, and I want everybody to know her fantastic, the Jenny Raymond books there. Fans and fabrications there, $9.99, you know, you've got the material magic, because I know Jenny loves uh, the material and shapes and then the architecture of the shapes. Creative tucks and textures by Jenny there. You've got, again, and the nether material magic there. You've got the foldy rolly patchwork pizzazz by Jenny Raymond at $9.99. Oh, I like that. Pizzazz. What do you like doing most in, the, in, your, in your sewing? Is it a garment? Is it the quilting? What, what I'm, you... I'm no dressmaker. No. no. So let, let's establish that I'm not a dressmaker. I make the occasional clothes if I have to. Well, your to. waistcoats, for um, sure. Yes, well, that's, that's sewing. Yeah, that's quilting. Uh, <laughs> basically, I'm, I'm a quilter, so I make quilts, I make yeah. bags, I make anything that's not dressmaking. <laughs> and why don't I do dressmaking? Well, because I look at the pattern, I think I can't possibly be that size, so I add lots on, and then it doesn't fit, and then I get fed up with it, so I put it in the bin and go down the shop. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, everybody. So there you but go. There Total go. honesty. Um, Raymond does not do dressmaking. <laughs> That's okay, but that doesn't need to stop you, lovely viewers, with our fantastic one-day special. Uh, but it's not just dresses in there. The skirts, you've got all sorts of home furnishings as well. So we were just talking about it because that was just, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to pay £13.48 for the lovely log cabin slider rule. But we've got the quarter circle block and the quarter circle block A and B. I'm intrigued. Okay, I let, let me show you something. I was very, you see, because I like playing with colour, shape and form, which is probably why I'm not a dressmaker, um, I like just taking the shapes and playing with them. So this was using the <gasps> quarter circle block. Okay? That's gorgeous. And it's a, it's a, one day I will finish it to go with the thousands and thousands of other unfinished things I have. So I just used a That's bit so of cool. colour and it's supposedly modern. Uh, basically, Very modern. The, yes, thank you. Uh, the design is formed by taking a quarter circle and an L-shaped piece. You've got two templates here. You have the quarter circle and you have the L-shaped piece. So it's very simple to cut a quarter circle out. You just need a piece of fabric, lay the template on it and cut round. So I'll just cut a couple of quarter circles as there's some fabric to hand here. Cut round there, flip it round. You can use any rotary cutter you like, but the little 28mm one actually is very nice for just doing small pieces. If I'm going to join this quarter circle to the L-shaped piece, and there's the L-shaped piece cut out, all you need to do is to find the centre. I've got two bits there, there's only one. So fold the L-shaped piece in half, little nick in the middle. Do not nick too much because you want to keep the nick within the quarter of an inch seam allowance. Ditto with this piece, fold it in half. Another little nick. And this gets fitted together in the same way that all curved seams do. You put middle to middle, nick to nick. Oh. Pin. Pin goes in the centre, holding those nicks together with the pin head sticking out on the raw edges. Gotcha. Take the flat end of the L-shaped piece and take it to the flat side of the quarter circle and put a pin in. Now, in some curved piecing, you don't have to clip this edge. This particular one, it will probably pay you to put a few clips in it. 
does depend on the fabric. Sometimes it'll just ease round or sometimes just a few clips. And I'm only clipping it, keeping it inside the seam allowance. Mm. So just a few clips. And again, on the other end, it's flat end of L to flat side of quarter circle. And your pin ideally wants to go on the outside edge so that you can move them when you sew. Fan it round and just fit it to the edge of the quarter circle. Great for hand sewers, this. Because I've got about just four minutes, Jenny, just hand so you know, sew round, thank you. And one on the other side. There we go, there. So once you've fitted the L shaped piece to the quarter circle, all you're going to do is sew round there using quarter inch seam allowance. So to the sewing machine, make sure you set it for a quarter inch. Lower the presser foot down, and indeed I like to lower the needle down because that starts the stitch. If you leave the needle sort of hanging around in midair, sometimes it will cough and splutter and then it birds nests. But if you drop the needle down, it starts the next stitch. Remove the pin, set off, keeping the edge of the presser foot or however you're doing your quarter of an inch. As you sew round, just flip the pins out, flip the pins out. We don't sew over pins, that's the royal we. If you do sew over pins, because I keep saying this, what has happened, and I've seen it happen, is sometimes the needle will hit the pin and the pin can go down into the insides of your machine. That is an expensive repair. Yeah. Right, at the end of this, I'm going to sew onto a donkey. Now, Fee doesn't know about donkeys. I don't know anything about the donkey. Right, donkeys are basically a scrap of fabric that you will sew onto at the end of any seam. Oh, yes, I've seen the donkey. That's right. Yes, I have. Yeah. You know about donkeys. This one's called Ethel. Why is it called the donkey? Because it's like a little tail. Uh, no, it's called the donkey because it carries the thread from one piece of work to the, the next. So Brilliant. I would then take my next piece of work and just imagine I'm going to sew it. I would then sew the next piece of work. So it's carried the thread from one piece of yeah. work to the next. Uh, you can chain piece in between, which is where you join them all together. But if you end on a donkey, then you're A in sewing mode, so to speak. And B, um, the needle doesn't get unthreaded because you haven't stopped stitching. The thread doesn't get so entangled. You tend to sew straighter because you're still thinking sewing as you sew off the piece of work. Yeah. And it generally is just a better way to do it. The machine will also perform better if it's sitting on a bit of fabric to begin with. Gotcha. So I would always use a scrap. And the scraps get smaller and smaller because you don't want to waste fabric. Right, having sewn that together, oh, wow. you can then play with the design and literally do what you like with it. So you, know, you can alter the colours as you saw what I did with my modern piece. Mm. There's another idea you can do with it that I liked even better and that was to come up with putting four of them together to possibly make a circle. Mm. And this is where that big half square triangle comes in. We might have to talk about this in the big because we've got oh, about 90 we might seconds, well have to. Jenny. I think we're going to have to save this. Yes, I yes. think we'll save this. And That's go. all right. Yeah, absolutely. We'll save it till 12 o'clock when I'll do strips with the 60 and I'll show you the rest of this, OK? Deal. Thank you very much, Jenny. Yes, uh, over half the stock of this bundle has gone. The Log Cabin Acrylic Template Bundle there. Uh, 643824. £13.50 saving, 50% off. What a great dynamic duo there. Uh, thank you so much, Jenny. Thank I've you, I've learned too. so much courthouse steps and, um, yeah, just, and then, how, here's me fire in the middle and there's me smoke and there's the chimney. I love it. I love <laughs> learned so much. It's brilliant. Um, one day special, of course, but that's what we're here to discuss as well as all these brilliant rulers. Have a little look online. As Jenny said, you know, you could gift some with some lovely material, save your favourites, start an industry business with a dog coat one, um, lots of soft furnishing and ultimate lots of patterns there if you are into your dress making 72 pounds saving they're huge saving and we've got that on two flexi by pence to spread the cost over august and september of 30 pounds per month 032918 massive thank you to you jenny thank you too Fee. absolutely gorgeous don't forget we'll see jenny at 12 o'clock if you've got any questions for jenny specifically to do with the, the templates or the quilting or any sewing uh, dilemmas then please let us know we'll make sure to ask jenny those in the 12 o'clock show we don't want you to go anywhere here on the craft store because there's plenty more still to see let's have a catch up More quilting now with bigger stitches. Then we'll be looking at Daisy May designs. And then we're going to let Leonie loose with Stamperia because it's a Wednesday. Hi, I'm Pat. I'm Mark. 
from Totally Patched. Most of the kits we produce, we design ourselves. The design process is usually inspired by the fabric itself. We use, only use great quality fabrics, 100% cottons. So whether you're a beginner or an experienced sewer or quilter, we hope you've got something for all of you. Hi, I'm Charmaine from Dolly Dimples and I've been crafting since I was a little girl and I have a massive passion for anything crafty related. Dolly Dimples is a fictional character in Dolly Dimples Town. There's uh, whimsical characters, fantasy characters, mythical characters. There's so much going on, so much happening in Dolly Town and it's a fun place to be in. We have decoupage, backing papers, we have templates for 3D objects, stencils in the mix, we have dyes and lots of other things are coming to you soon. Make sure you tune in for the Dolly Dimple shows and have some fun. Hi, I'm Abs from Orange Create. I've been crafting for over 10 years now and I love stamping, stenciling, creating layers, colours, textures and creating depth and dimension. Orange Create was established in October 2016, collaborating with a group of designers and artists from all over the world, bringing different designs and products in different styles. We proud ourselves of high quality photopolymer clear stamp sets, dyes, stencils, washi tapes and acrylic blocks, all in different sizes and formats. I hope to bring you inspiration and different ways of using your craft products. Make sure you don't miss the Orland Create shows. Good morning. Now, this is my first time working with Debbie and Kim. Uh, they've been on once before, but uh, we'd love to know a little bit about you. So we've got Debbie at the sewing machine. There you go. And we've got Kim there as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the company, why it's called Bigger Stitches, etc., and how you met? All about that. Okay. Four. Where do we start? Okay. Where do we start? <laughs> so, uh, Bigger Stitch is nice and easy one. We're, yep. we're actually from the town of Bigger mm -hmm. in uh, Scotland. So, um, when I started the company uh, six, seven years ago, and, you know, a play on words type thing, yeah. um, it made sense to uh, Bigger Stitches and mm -hmm. sort of moulded over and what have you. So, that's where we're from. So, we came down from Scotland last night. Um, I've been sewing since I was at school. Right. I did dressmaking, uh, wedding dresses, bridesmaids dresses, christening dresses. Um, and then, so what's that, 35 years mm -hmm. ago? And, um, uh, and then I started maybe about 10, 11, I forget now, the years just fly by, uh, started doing some um, patchwork and quilting. Uh, and I met Debbie, uh, who popped in literally into a pop-up shop that I had started in Bigger. Mm -hmm. And so I met Debbie uh, six years ago, six, six years, seven yeah. years ago. Um, and and we've you know we've just taken it from you know strength to strength i started the business but and then debbie came on board not yeah. just uh, you know as a customer first um working in the shop and now business partners amazing so, so how yeah. long have you been um sewing for debbie i have been sewing for six years right okay uh, kim <laughs> taught me how to patchwork and quill and right. i've taken it from there um I didn't sew before. I inherited uh, an old, old singer machine from my mother-in-law and I've just upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff. All right then. So lovely jubbly. Uh, we're going to go through some of the kits that we've got on the show. So we've got some different options for you. Uh, so the first one that we have got, if you look here, we've got the, the beautiful pattern fabric. You've got your plane and then you've got those lovely five inch um, charm squares. And I have to say, I like the name Fiddle dee dee. Fiddle dee dee. <laughs> so we've we've taken that. So we've just called it fiddle for now. Yep. 
because uh, just to make it ni nice and easy for customers and, and for you and for us, uh, that's the name of the charm pack actually by right. uh, the designers, Fiddle Dee Dee. So, and this is, uh, yeah, so as you've talked about the colorful fabric, that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be for the border. Mm -hmm. The plain fabric is actually gonna be for the sashing. Okay. And uh, the squares of the charm pack, you're gonna get quite a choice, uh, 42 squares in a pack. You actually need 36 for the blocks that we've made for this little quilt. So Amazing. Do you want to hold yeah. up that sample yeah, that you've got sure, there? Yeah, sure, sure. We get a good look at those fabrics then. And you do get the pattern. I'll show you the pattern in a second. Um, but it, look at, they're very vibrant, lovely, they, jolly colours. They are. And we, um, if you're... Um, Oh, if you if you're a new if you're a beginner to yeah. quilting, sometimes and we say I've I've said it quite often actually. And to start off with, this is a pattern that Debbie and I have taught brand new people mm -hmm. to quilting. And sometimes you just let to, need to let the fabric speak for itself. You don't need to do a complicated pattern. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do lots of chopping up, which, which we know that um, people are a bit worried about. You can just put the um, squares together. This particular one. Girl way, boy way, something nice and bright and mm -hmm. spring-like. Um, so yeah, you just let the fabric do the talking and just, yeah. And so we're, we're talking about, we've got our five inch charm squares. What yeah. size are we getting of the larger pieces? Uh, so of the plain fabric uh, yeah. for the Junior Sashin, you are getting, um, you're getting a long quarter. Oh, no, uh, no. We're getting a long quarter, so you're getting 10 inches. Okay. Uh, because actually, if you want to make the sash in a little bit, there's a bit of an allowance there if you want to make it slightly wider. So anyway, 10 inches of the sash in fabric and a half a meter for the outer border because right. you'll need five, uh, four five-inch strips. Brilliant stuff. That. Lovely. So that is your first color option. That's your yeah. fiddle. And then the next option, this is nice. We've got some sort of um, burnt oranges in this next one, haven't we? I really like that. Uh, we do. I mean, it's just that, um, <laughs> uh, again, going back to when we've taught... Um, We've taught this in the shop when we had a shop on the high street. And actually, a lot of our students, if you like, they could spend a couple of hours looking at the little squares to, to choose the 36 out of the 42 that you're going to get and then divide that, subdivide that into um, the four lots of nine squares. And, the and then when it comes to the choice of, I mean, what do you go with? Do you go with the green, the burnt orange? Do you go with the cream? Yeah. There's no wrong choice. This is just what we've done what we've how we've curated it and chosen which we think makes the colors mm. sort of um stand out absolutely because it almost we were talking this morning as well on a, a previous show about like we're coming into harvest and that sort of yeah that's what this reminds yeah. me of those yeah. lovely colors yeah beautiful so this one is the bloom the last bloom that's it perfect and then the next one that we have got uh this is Abbey Rose, so we, again, lovely, beautiful. You've got very good taste in fabrics, ladies. Oh, <laughs> there's just too many to choose from. I was going to say, I need to win the lottery, or we need to win the lottery. <laughs> yeah, we all to do. Have what, a, let me in on it. <laughs> to yeah. have some more in, so. Beautiful. So we, again, we're just having a little look. You've got that wonderful limey green, those beautiful, um, again, those beautiful colours in your five-inch squares, and then a real feature with that big floral. We, we have, so that is also the outer border um, on, I would say on, mo not all of them, we, we, I know that you, we're going to look at a couple of others, but certainly on this one, um, the outer border is the same collection as the squares, Abbey Rose, uh, by one of our favourite designers. But on this one, Alex, can we yeah. point out what you've got there yeah. um, is very slightly different to what we've got on the demonstration. So on... Um, uh, on this one, we've yeah. got two different coloured sashions. We've got these two diagonal squares with that zesty green. Okie dokie. These two squares here with the orange. Yeah. And in a minute, I'm, we're going to be asking the cameraman to if they can zoom around to... Um, there's a quilt hanging up right behind Debbie's head. That's another one where it's an example where you might have two different coloured sashing. OK, we're we just we, coming to it. Yeah, OK. There you we, go. we love sashing. Sashing, to, again, it's something nice and simple. Um, and But it just 
makes the makes those squares if you like the five inch squares which which were demonstrating on that outer border mm -hmm. it's um they're the hero fabrics right and the sashin to my mind um in our opinion with the colors that we've chosen and it doesn't need to be white doesn't need to be fat mm -hmm. um fat sashin um just makes the colors sing just Absolutely. lifts it all up so beautiful yeah. right then so there you go that is your third option under the same item number marvelous so that's your abbey rose then we're moving on to the at home light because it's it, am i right sorry it's the different borders is that right it's different different borders you're yeah. absolutely right there alex so we've got um at home is the name of the the collection and right. again the outer border is also from the same um no, it's not actually. However, you would think it's from the same. The two different designers have got very similar colour palettes. Mm. And this again highlights that you don't have to go. Sometimes talking to quilters will know that you've got pre cuts at home or yeah. you'll have fabric, enough fabric that you can cut them into cut your stash into five inch squares 36 of them you you need um, and you might just have a coordinating um, doesn't have to be from the same collection mm -hmm. but as long as your outer border fabric kind of coordinates with what you've got in here yeah but to your point Alex um, yes what you're showing off there is the light mm -hmm. kind of floral um, it's a light background creamy yep. background with that floral print but right beside you you have the one with the darker one we and can so move on to that And one. so rather yeah. than Debbie and I choose what you should have, <laughs> yeah. why don't you choose it yourself? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> because, I like that. Um, you know, the, there's no wrong choice uh, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And this olive green um, fabric that we've chosen for the sashin, that mm -hmm. is actually from the same collection um, for, from that outer border. So it goes either with the light background or the dark background. We just didn't have time to make up. But Excellent. How, yeah, if, whichever look that you want to go for. Um, and also quilters um, will kind of enhance it again by choosing either a light or a dark colour to do their binding on mm -hmm. the end. So if you're going for that lighter outer border, you might go for a very dark binding colour. Mm -hmm. um, if you do it for the darker outer border, you might go for a lighter one. So again, right. whatever you've got at the house um, in your stash. Nice. So, one less choice for us to have made. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the onus is on you at home. There exactly, you go. Um, exactly. And then uh, the final option with the five inch charms. Um, now, this is Island. Why do you call it that out of interest? Well, um, the charm pack that is used for those five inch squares in the, in the middle is from, and these are all Moda designers ah, where right. all the charm packs come from. So um, it's a designer by uh, called Minnick and Simpson and they do a lot of red, white and blue. Um, I don't mean as in flags, but mm -hmm. red, white and blue kind of design. And it's called um, McKinnock Island. Okay. And I never looked up the relevance. Oh, no, so don't it's worry. Just easy for us, well, it's just easy for us to refer to it. It's the island collection because yes. I don't really know what McKinnock Island is. And for this one, we had some fabric from another um, another designer actually and it, it's not moda but it's beautiful mm -hmm. and I think um, it's a what's the word it's a tip of a cap I suppose oh, to yeah. uh, we've got a town a city in Scotland called Paisley and we've got these like Paisley yeah. style um, but it goes I know it's busy but it goes because we've calmed it down a little bit uh -huh. by this darker sash in here and then we go straight out to uh, you know a, a bigger print which is also um, quite good if you're doing these five inch wide or, yep. or wider um, if you can choose something with a wide oh, sorry with a larger print because then you're not going to lose a lot of that print in smaller cuts do you know what I like about the paisley actually is that because of the color of the background it kind of makes it almost a little bit vintagey do you know what I mean yeah yes yeah. it does yeah, yeah. That's really so on pretty. this one, um, if we were going to finish it, and we will finish them, so on another set, yeah. if you have us back, we'll display these. So again, we'd probably go with a, a, a dark blue, um, you know, just a, a plain dark blue for the binding. So again, where you've got a busy fabric for your outer border, you can calm it down and then frame it with yeah. that binding. That's what we're talking about. So Amazing. Now, this is the pattern that's coming with any of those options, so I do want to just show you this. Um, could a beginner do this? Uh, absolutely. Wonderful. As I said, Debbie and I, we've taught beginners in 
when we had the high street shop and because of covid we'll go back to teaching beginners but yeah. absolutely um it's it's good for beginners because it actually teaches people the importance of some of the basics basically if you're starting your quilting journey patchwork journey because okay. you'll need to nest your seams you're going to be adding sashing whether it's one or two colors yeah you need to measure you can't just sew a piece of fabric on you need to measure it then put your sashing on likewise for your outer border and then because we ran the class for four weeks it taught people how to quilt which is layering it up i know we're coming on to wadding and the backing very shortly mm -hmm. um and then i think debbie is going to be showing us how to do the binding so all of that yeah um is perfect for the beginners Amazing. Right then, so for any of those options, it's £36.99. There's some beautiful fabrics here. Uh, 128881. Uh, now, then we're moving on to some kits, but this time with the little mini. Oh, they're so cute, aren't they? Little, little <laughs> they they yeah. are so cute. Um, so we've so got two options. We have, yes. Regency? We got Regency, so I've got this one here in front of me, which is the little quilt top done. So again, we, we talked before about five inch squares and they come in a pre-cut pack called a charm pack. You also get tiny little um, mini charms, um, which are two and a half inch squares, but again, quilter to quilter uh, we know that you're going to have stash you're going to have things left over so you might have um, well actually when you do the big quilt I said to you that you need 36 squares out of 42 you're going to be left with yeah. six of those five inch squares left over there's not too many things that you can do with six five inch squares right. however you cut those squares into four you're going to get 24 oh that's a lot so you can yeah. make like a little oblong one of these so yeah just two and a half i do have a tendency to go large debbie's telling me quite often to <laughs> let's just it calm in. it down a bit let's just uh, <laughs> so yes we've got the um the antique version here and debbie has got the brightly colored one that you're going to be moving on to Alex. amazing so. lovely so that is your first option there that's the regency very pretty, isn't it? I love that. And then we move on to our Nova. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, so again, that's lovely and bright, isn't it? It yes. is. It's from another designer that we love. Um, mm -hmm. They're called Basic Grey. Yeah. Um, they're a designer for Moda. They're known for grunge fabric. So oh. again, quilters will know if you're familiar with um, any yeah. of that fabric. But um, the one that Debbie has done here, she's going to demonstrate um, part of it. Um, when you're dividing or subdividing those little squares into your four blocks mm -hmm. some collections lend itself that quite clearly you're going to have four little you know you've got this zesty line block you've got a dark blue a pink and a red and then a an aqua color but how gorgeous to bring yeah. it together by the color of the binding sorry the color of the sashing which in the kit you're going to have enough i think debbie aren't they for yeah. um, doing the binding as well which is and then you can you can go quite bright and zesty yeah, on that nice. outer border. Really nice. So, yeah. Good stuff. Now, you'll get the same pattern, by the way. So it's for, yep. for both of them. Nice. So there we go. Uh, and if you want each of those options, then it's uh, £15.99. Item number is 595073. Then what I like that you've done for us, so that we, then we don't have to think about it, is that you've brought some finishing kits. We did. Yes. So yeah. first off, we've got finishing kits with the polyester, and then we'll move on to the ones with the cotton. Uh, so you've got three different options here. So you can go for the cream, you can go for the navy, and you can go for the black. Um, so what sort of sizes are we getting in the, because this is like the large, isn't it? Oh, 50 by 50, I'm being told. Yes. Right? yes, so the large size is 50 by 50, by 50. Yeah. so you're right, you get the wad in and you'll get a choice of the three colours that we're going to use for um, the backing fabric. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, then we have got also three smaller sizes. Brilliant. Sorry, so just saying on those 50 by 50, Alex, yeah. the quilts that you're going to make with those kits that you were showing off, mm -hmm. that's going to be perfect for that because I think these quilts are about 40, 40, 40 41, 42 finished. Yes. Um, so you're going to have enough to back it and have a, about a four inch, three to four inch overlap. 
around the edge of both the wadding and the backing fabric. Yeah. And you could even use, if you're clever and you're smart enough, you might even use that backing mm -hmm. fabric for your binding yeah. if you want to as well. So, yes, yeah, so we've got the polyester. Mm -hmm. um, some people out there will know and prefer polyester wadding whilst others will prefer the cotton. Wadding. Nice. So. Okay, so we've got on screen for you the details for... Oh, we're just doing that. <laughs> Sorry, uh -huh. we're just doing that. We, uh, we'll pop on the screen for you the details of the large, and that's the polyester. There we go. <laughs> 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 we are put, definitely putting the details up for the polyester first. Here we go. Nobody's had a coffee yet. Uh, there we go. So it's uh, 18.99. Perfect. But the item number that you'll need for either one of these options is 223992. Now, if you want the smaller polyester, that's at the bottom of the screen, and that's only £9. Uh, 427353 is your item number. However, then... I don't know why I did that. Um, we've got the cotton options. I have to say that's very soft, isn't it? The cotton options. It's lovely, isn't yeah. it? And this particular one, it is 100% cotton. Mm. Again, quilters will know and prefer, you know, whether they want an 80-20, polyester, wool, bamboo. There's so many options out there. We've just bought the two with us, and that's the polyester or the 100% cotton. Excellent. So. Lovely. Um, and again, you can go for this, which is your 50 by 50 in either the black, the navy or the cream. 21.99.023.923. And at the bottom of the screen, we've got the small. Um, have you got a small one there? You I do, I yes, do. I, I have, um, Alex. So the small one is, um, so if the large is 55 by 50, then the small one is 25 by 25. So again, okay. you're going to get the wad in, either polyester or cotton that you would prefer, mm -hmm. um, and the choice of three colours for the backing fabric. Yeah. And as you can see on here, perfect um, size uh, to, to back um, your little mini quilt that we've got over there, Brilliant. plus um, another little one that Debbie's <laughs> going to be showing off as well. So it's perfect. We, we thought one size to fit a couple of options yeah. and the larger size to also fit a couple of options as well. Perfect. No, that's good. So it's nice that we've got to... Can I be cheeky and ask you yeah. both, which do you prefer, polyester or cotton? Uh, I would go, for me, I'd probably go with uh, the cotton yeah. or an 80 20 cotton if we had that on there. Uh -huh. Polyester, we, we've been asked this a lot actually in the shops, um, you know, what you would go for. And as a rule of thumb, your polyester is going to, when you wash a quilt, mm -hmm. a polyester is going to shrink the least amount. Ah. So it's quite good if you're making something like a play mat or something to go yep. that babies or toddlers are going to use or a picnic mat or something. So um, it's going to go in and out of the washing machine very often. Mm -hmm. But a polyester one will probably stay as flat as it was when it went in. Okay. If you go with a cotton or the, a cotton mix, um, there's a little bit of shrink or rather there's a bit more shrinkage. I don't mind that. I like that shrinked look. Yeah. We're making quilts at the end of the day, so okay. I like that kind of, as you say, that vintagey look, yeah. that shrunk, shrunken look as well. And that's what you get with um, with cotton. Do you have to pre-wash it before you sew it? Uh, no. Okay, fine. No. <laughs> I'm so, I'm Everybody has no, different I'm, opinions of that. Yeah. Whether you pre-wash your fabric, pre-wash your batting. Right. I personally never have. Okay. That's it. That's all good. Yeah. All good. All good to know, right? We'll then. probably get um, lots of quilters now contacting you saying you must wash you it. Must wash no. it. No. <laughs> no, but it's like I, I talk about this a lot on all different crafts. There is no, there shouldn't be any quilting police. There shouldn't be any, you know, right. card making police. Let's just have some fun, and that's what it's about. Now we've got one more thing to show you. This is fabulous because it's William Morris, and I know this is like gold, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so these are absolutely. Stunning colours. They're very rich, aren't they? Very rich. Yes. Yes. Nice. So are we getting both charm packs, the patterns and the sort of solids? You are on this one because yep. actually the pattern is, is very slight. Well, it is different. It's another pattern that we're bringing on. We've done it before. We've played around with it. Um, and just to warn the cameraman that there's one, there's two quilts, one <laughs> sort of to the Debbie's right shoulder yeah. and one right behind me. And I've got the medium size, which is the same as a William Morris one. Lovely. Uh, and Debbie can show you the mini version too. So again, um, to highlight... 
the William Morris, as what we've got there, to highlight the, the William Morris charm squares. Mm -hmm. You need something like, in our opinion, Beautiful. you need something like the black and yeah. plain to highlight the patterns, yeah. fabric, to really bring it to the to the front. So, mm. it's and on this one too, Alex, it was one of the first ones that. Um, in the outer border, you'll see um, on the one that you're holding and the one that I'm holding, and um, we can come to yours these, actually. If you these, like. can you point it out? No, no, you're <laughs> you're prettier on camera. <laughs> 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 so um, you can see in the outer border, it's one of those that like, why should we just have an outer border of plain? Yeah. You know, so actually we want to sort of extend the pattern right out to the border, which mm -hmm. is why on this particular one you've got the four points, yeah. so top, bottom, left, and right. Um, uh, to continue that um, the ring if you like um, and to finish off the actual pattern mm -hmm. so um, yeah it's probably going to be more obvious on the William Morris one and probably these two larger ones behind us um, let me move it so that you can get the edges there Here we yeah go. yeah and it's up to you which one again no right and wrong mm -hmm. so um, which ones the one that I've I've got here I've got five different colored planes and five different colored prints yeah it's just again it's just multiple layouts that you can do yeah. um i know i'll 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 big up our quilting group bigger quilters oh, okay. who <laughs> um because both debbie and i we get them to do a lot of half square triangles and they you know i'm sure there's voodoo dolls especially of me <laughs> this is just all half square triangles right but the layout of what you do with them makes your pattern yeah. makes that overall pattern and if you can stand back and have a look at it mm. like i said if the camera yeah well the camera is on um is the on the large one. ones yeah. yeah so again we've got um our, one of our well actually two of our favorite um fabric designers mm -hmm. for yeah. moda we got primitive gathering and we've primitive gathering and uh, kansas <laughs> trouble yeah and um what you can do with lots of lights or lots of darks yeah and that's what you can do but all half square triangles amazing yeah Such be now we're really really busy for the um william morris okay we we don't have a lot of stock of this we're already 40 percent of the stock gone so right, please okay. do check out your baskets and of course you'll also get the pattern with it as well uh two payments of 24 pounds and 50 pence or you can go for it outright at 48 pounds and 99 pence gorgeous the moody fabrics i like them mm -hmm. 945 515 is your item number here is the website so you can shop online at thecraftstore.com and you can see all of those different options that we've got for you there's the William Morris. Yeah, there's also a red work gathering um, skirling kit. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so that's there. And then don't forget all of the finishing kits. They're there for you as well. Right, so I, without further ado then, I'm going to hand over to you, Debbie. What would you like to demo? Something we are asked all the time, whether it's um, just on one of our soup and sew weekends that quilters come along to and soup do. Soup and sew? Yes, yeah, <laughs> cool. we provide the soup lunch, they bring whatever they want to sew with them. Um, and I keep getting asked by people who've been sewing for a long time or not very long at all to turn a corner with their binding. Okay. So what I thought I would demonstrate today is how to turn the corner with your binding. Brilliant. Very simple. So I've actually done most of it so that all I literally have to do is uh, one corner for you. So I like to use my quarter inch foot when mm -hmm. I'm sewing this as well so that it is just a quarter inch away and your foot has the different measurements on the tip so that you know that you're stopping a quarter inch from the edge of your fabric as well. So lift your foot, lift your needle, take it to the side so that it's going to turn round to the way you're going to sew back again. Take your binding up to 12 o'clock, <laughs> easiest way to describe it, Yeah. up to 12 o'clock, keeping it flush with the edge of your quilt and then back down to 6 o'clock. Your finger is just gently holding it in. So that you've got a nice square edge, top and bottom, no little wrinkle. Keep your thread just slightly out of the way. Start just slightly off the top so that you don't get um, a 
hang up and stuck and I like to go forward a couple of stitches and then actually back a stitch so that I know that I've definitely joined it and then We'll test you on the next one, Alex. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's no, no, no. Now, okay. I just need to, while you're just sewing down there, and if we may pause, I just need to do a quick um, update on these. Uh, so we've got the light here. It's the at-home range. Lovely. So you're getting that lighter uh, border there. You've got that fabulous fabric, and then you've also got your five-inch um, five charm squares. So that one is the light. And then we have also got the dark. So it's just to do with the border, really. So you, it's just to give you choice, which you, whichever one you fancy. Uh, don't forget, with any of these options, there are more options with these five charms. Uh, five, five, five inch charm squares, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but just to show you those two again, and you will get that fabulous pattern. Do check out on the website. Okay, news about the William Morris. Gone, can't get any more. Sadly, thank you so. <laughs> thank you for checking out your baskets. Though it's absolutely stunning fabric. So if any bounce back, we will let you know. So apologies to interrupt, ladies, but I had to do. I had to do me admin. Oh, right. <laughs> we, did, we didn't know. We love William Morris, but it's one of those um, people either like it. You know, it's one of those marmite things. You either like it or don't like it. Uh -huh. I didn't know that it was so popular. Yeah, that's all so. good. Yeah, yeah. So we like it on this channel. Right. We'll remember um, that definitely. for the next so, time. Can I hand back to you then, Debbie? Yep. So that's that demo done, so that you can see that your corner is sorted, so that when you fold it over to the other side you have a nice, neat, turned corner. Pa so. Perfect. We're just coming to you there. There we there go. go. Lovely. Um, so what else would you like to show us, Debbie? Well, the other thing we are frequently asked, sticking with a binding technique, is how to finish your binding on your quilt. That because is a everybody, question, yeah. <laughs> everybody wants to know what to do with the two endy bits that are left. So. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have quite a bit of a gap in the middle, just to give you a bit of wiggle room in changing yep. it. Um, what you want to do is have a little scrap of the fabric off the edge of your binding, open it up, lay it underneath so that you can see what your measurement of the width of your binding will be, and overlap your two edges. And you want to cut both sides of your cut piece that's underneath. That is your mm -hmm. guide for your measurement. Don't yep. try and measure it, just actually <clears throat> and make sure you cut the right end off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. cut off the wrong end. Super careful. Okay. Too beautiful and of fabric. I, I always cut it just a fraction shorter and it literally is just, we're talking a couple of micromillimetres just to make sure um, it doesn't you give you a wrinkle okay. when you're sewing it back on. Now, I'll fold we, that in a wee bit just to let you see. Because what you're going to do is you're going to bring this edge of your binding down and lay it open flat. You're going to bring the other side in and you're going to lay it over the top mm -hmm. but upside down. It's a slightly more difficult to show you this with a plain fabric. If it was patterned, yeah. obviously you'd be putting the two face sides of the fabric together. Okay. So all you do is that. Do you need to pin it or anything or just? Uh, yes, I will pin it. And what you then want to do is, same as you were joining your um, strips together for your sashing and your bind or your binding, yeah. a diagonal line. Right. Right across. So you have a little chat to yourselves. <laughs> so we come up this. with um, we come up with our own our sayings. So you know, baggy binding. So what <laughs> Debbie was just saying there. So you need your two ends of your sash. And just to recap as well, you need your two ends of the binding sort of overlapping mm -hmm. like this. But you need to cut. You only you have to have it overlapping by a certain measurement and yeah. that's the measurement of the width of your sashing. So Debbie's saying that you, she cuts it a, a fraction very smaller 
than that and that stops any bagginess in the binding any kind of ripple which you don't want right. so if we've got a few of our quilters that we've taught mm -hmm. and um, we've talked about long arm joe as well when our quilts most of our quilts get to her she doesn't want any of those ripples or the extra the bagginess right. of the um, of the binding the other thing to point out as well just whilst debbie's doing that part quite commonly quite, and when i started quilting your binding strips were always so when i looked at patterns um instructions when i looked at youtube um tutorials the binding strips were always two and a half inches wide you fold that in half you attach it just like what debbie's done but i was finding that my binding when i would bring it then to the back and I would do the hand sewing I would find a little it, a little bit baggy mm -hmm. hence the baggy binding so now I and I think we and what we've taught in class choose something that choose the width of your binding strips what you would like but have a go at having your binding strips only two inches wide okay you put it on in exactly the same way you join it in exactly the same way whether it's two and a half or two inches but I find um, that um, any of these bindings now that you were to look at, there's no bagginess in them, mm -hmm. and they only started out as two-inch strips, right? As well, so that's you know something for quilters to go away and just experiment, especially on a small project like yeah. you know the size. You haven't lost much. Um, you're still going to have this gorgeous little quilt or mm. this, this little table topper or whatever it is that you're making. So. Sorry, Debbie, back to you. Okay, so finishing off the binding, so I've stitched diagonally across. Yeah. So what you want to then do is cut so that you can yes. fold it back in. So cut the extras. Leave yourself about a quarter of an inch. You can put it down with a ruler and um, mark it, but I can just eyeball it. And, and then I like to leave my... Uh, finger press my seam open so that again it's just not too lumpy so that when you actually then lay your quilt back out flat you've got a nice flat edge back to your binding and you'll see there that that's quite nice and it's going to be a nice tight if you do it just slightly too long you get a little bit of a crease and then it sews into your quilt and right yeah it's hard to disguise it then. Hard no, to but we've got a good place. So that will that, actually yeah. just sew completely flat now. Mm -hmm. Marvellous. Nice. I'll go. do a quick recap then, shall I? And then we'll come back to you. What yes. would you like to demo next, Debbie? Oh, I think I'll show Skirling. off the lovely skirling squares, nesting of seams, just for the last strip that I've got to put on there. Uh, amazing. So speaking of those, the skirl skirling squares, <laughs> easy for me to say we <laughs> do have that uh, available for you uh, and you've got the pattern as well so it's a gorgeous kit now this is also proving very busy you've um, hopped ahead on the website for this one so it's 18.99 uh, item number is 746408 lovely so you've got your fabric strips and your squares in that one <clears throat> right let's take you through these colors again um, so you've got fiddle dd -D, Everything's difficult for me to say this one. Uh, you've got your patterned uh, fabric, then you'll get your plain or your solid, however you like to say, and then you've got your five inch squares. They're such a lovely um, set of colours, aren't they? Can you remind us one more time, Kim, what size the patterned one and the plain is? Uh, you're going to get, of the patterned yeah. fabric, for your outer border, you're going to get half a metre. Okay. Because you're going to need uh, four strips of five inches wide. Okay. Uh, for the plain, which you're going to use for your sashing, you're going to get a long quarter or a skinny quarter mm -hmm. or ten inches. So okay. How, if that makes it easy to so you're going to get that and I think um, you're going to get an allowance if you want to make your sashing very slightly wider mm -hmm. than what we're suggesting or what the pattern is saying you can do that that you've got that allowance in there so yep. three quarters of a meter marvelous thank you for that Kim okay so this is your fiddle dd and then we come on to this one which is the last bloom I think this one might be my favorite it's really nice and autumnal, isn't it? So, so all those lovely, beautiful oranges that are running through there. Love that one. And then moving along, this one is the Abbey Rose, and you've really got a feature piece here, haven't you? Look at that. That's stunning. And then you've got that lovely limey green and all of your 
um, five inch squares. Then next, we've got the at home, the light version. Ah, oh, has it? Right, this one is now the most popular at the moment, mm -hmm. going for this one. Nice, light and bright. So it's that that makes the difference because this is your at home light. And then you can also go for your at home dark, which is here. And then last but not least, you have got uh, Ireland. There we go. <laughs> and that's got that fabulous paisley in it. Um, it's really nice. It does have a vintage look. Sorry, I've sort of, the pack shot, I because I moved it, I've made it not look very neat. But anyway, <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. And then, again, you're going to get your pattern with any of those. Okay, that is £36.99 for any of those options. 128881. But then you can also um, go for the mini charm sets. And again, you've got two options. So we've got our fabulous Regency. Lovely. And then we've got the Nova. Nice. And again, you're going to get that same pattern in there uh, for $15.99. Item number is 595073. Then we've also got the finishing kit. So if you are making them up as your quilt, then it's just nice that you can get it all in one go, can't you? So first off then, we've got the finishing kit that is the large. It's 50 by 50 inches. And you've got your cream with the polyester, the navy with the polyester, and the black with the polyester. Now, if you want the smaller finishing kit, same colours, that's at the bottom of the screen for nine, uh, nine pounds. Uh, item number for the bottom one, the smaller kit, 427353. And that'll be 25 by 25. And then if you go for the large, of your polyester, 1899 223992. And then we've also got the cottons. Um, again, you've got the same colourway, so you can go for the black, you can go for the navy, or you can go for the cream. So those are your finishing kits there. And again, that's the large, that's the 50 by 50. Uh, 21 pounds and 99 pence. Item number is 023923. And then the smaller one, again, if you want it in the cotton way, that's at the bottom of the screen for ten ninety nine. Uh, let's have a oh yeah. Can't show you that. I'm sorry. It's gone. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, right. Have a look at the uh, website again, just so you can see all of the kits that we've got on the show. And if you've got any questions for the ladies, please feel free. Send your questions into studio at thecraftstore.com. Ah, uh, yeah. Shop by brand as well. Uh, there we go. Let's see. Are we on here now? We'll have a little look. There you go, bigger stitches. Perfect. Yay. Okie dokie, um, I'm going to hand back to you now, uh, Debbie and Kim. What do you fancy Perfect. showing? Well, actually, just before Debbie gets set, so sure. one of our patterns is called Skirling Squares, yeah. and you asked us why we're called Bigger Stitches, and we're from the town of Bigger in yeah. South Lanarkshire in Scotland. There's a little village outside of Bigger, which is where our little cottage shop is, called Skirling. Oh. Okay. So we always struggle, both of us. We come up with these patterns. We're, we're fine with this. Well, what if we do this and what if we do that? But when it comes to pattern names, yeah. apart from just using the fabric um, on there, we were wondering. So it's just recently been taught, uh, oh. t uh, referred to Skirling Squares. Okay. We're from the town. We're from the village, or rather, yeah. of um, that's where the shop is. Oh. So that so it's just a little bit of a side. That's why. But yes, you have to get your, your tongue around yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. I like little stories like that. Right then, over to you, Kim. Oh, sorry, Debbie. Uh, so. Debbie. Again, as Kim says, she hates wastage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely detests it. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what quilt we have ever made. Kim's fallback position is you'll get a half square triangle out of that. Yeah, just right. keep those little two inch squares. <laughs> you'll get a half square triangle out of that. So she challenged me the other day, slightly jokingly, we could do a skirling squares with two and a half inch squares and do a lovely little half square triangle. And I was like, yeah, we could, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah. She's challenging so you. The royal we did. <laughs> um, and this, we're very lucky because this actually, the charm pack actually divides very well into darks and lights. Um, so I did the dark and light all the way through it. This one takes a little bit extra yardage around the outside again to um, give you a light border. So again, 
all nice and neatly sewn together. And with this one, yeah, lots of nesting of seams, huge amount of nesting of seams. So again, you want to just nest up your seam nice and tight. It's also worth it though, isn't it? Oh, so we, oh, so we, worth it. <laughs> we, yeah. talk about, we talk about some of the, um, the basics that we've taught and this nesting of the seams that Debbie's referring to and showing you right now. If you learn that right from the start mm -hmm. and then adopt that sort of ethos, if you like, uh, if you're doing something as tiny or as small as what Debbie's demonstrating right now, to one of these quilts that's right in front of me or one of the quilts that's on the back walls behind us. Um, I think you're gonna be pleased with your results. You're yeah. gonna have nested up seams. So it'll become second nature. But yes, on the one that Debbie's doing where the outer border is made up of lots of two and a half inch squares, you need to nest those seams. For every one of those seams, you need to nest them. Right. So, but I still say, it is it's, worth it. It's yes, definitely it's worth it. Definitely it's worth definitely it. worth it. It does it. look and extremely cute when it's done. I yeah. do like it in the small version. It's just a little bit. <laughs> it takes just as much time to do the small version as it takes to do a big version. It does. Ah, okay. it does. Yeah. So, again, just a nice sew. So, and I like to pin um, almost both sides of the seam so it actually holds down. And I tend to try and sew to the side mm -hmm. that the seam would lift. So the underneath is nice and easy and just guide along your sewing machine. Whereas the top, you can just lift every now and again, wiggle your foot a little bit as okay. I always need to do. In. Right up and almost to the pin. Do not go over your pins. That's a horrible thing for your poor little needle. Um, and it usually ends up breaking your thread as well. Mm. So right up to the edge of the pin before you pull it out. N nesting your seams, Alex, yeah. is where on the top you see the seam, say, is going away from you, which means the seam underneath is coming towards you. So you want your seams going in the opposite directions, and that's how you nest your seam. Yeah. It's not always... Um, Possible. So Debbie there is, as well as because she doesn't want to sew over a pin, she's pausing when she's coming to that pin and that nesting of the seams because sometimes that seam that's underneath mm -hmm. kind of wants to flip. Obviously it's, it's following, um, you know, it's closest to the sew machine and it might want to automatically flip in an opposite direction and Debbie needs to know, I need you to go in a certain direction because the top one's going in a certain direction, the one underneath is going. Right. So that's why um, you need to just take your time and go over it. The other thing that Debbie was just saying about it takes probably just as much time as mm -hmm. it does with two and a half inch squares as with the 10 inch squares that yeah. you start off with. We have been, um, in our teaching, we have been telling absolute beginners, don't be um, afraid, don't be overwhelmed. You might start with a charm pack, which are your five inch squares. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's easy to do something in two and a half squares. It's, it's not actually, it's, well it is, it's not as difficult, sorry, it's not more difficult and it's not easier. It's just a little bit fiddlier. Mm -hmm. But then the, in the opposite way, if you wanna then do something with 10 inch squares, so yeah. a common pre-cut is your layer cakes, um, don't be afraid to go large. Mm -hmm. it, everything, all those principles, all those, guidance and and guidelines of nesting your seams of you know of pinning mm -hmm. it would apply whether she was doing something with the two and a half inch squares or the 10 inch squares or something in the middle so please don't be ever afraid of going larger or going smaller you're both so knowledgeable i'm glad well, <laughs> this yeah. Yeah. all good how it's so you know and just when you do it right, you don't get so much of a bump on the underneath, which makes your finished quilt look so much smoother. Yeah. And if you do send them off to a long arm quilter, it makes their job a little bit easier as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that uh, Joe would curse me if I um, if I had too lumpy a seam or my borders weren't quite right. right. I mean, I've had a few comments, so he's you know, <laughs> well, always um, learning. <laughs> Everyone's learning. Everybody, all the time. you know, does. If when you stop learning, that's when you give up. Yes. I yeah, understand. keep learning. Yeah, um, and so your your seams all then lie all nice and neat. I've 
obviously I've not sewn that, uh, ironed that bit yet, so I'm just holding it away. The heat from my hands will keep it nice and flat. <laughs> um, and then you just get a nice, flat, smooth surface and your ends all join. And it looks nice. It does, doesn't it? So, so again, that's yeah. um, almost the same size, I think, or just a fraction bigger than um, the Charming Squares block. So the finishing mm -hmm. kit for the small one will works with this one as well. Amazing. And I would go for the cream to finish this one. You go for the... I would go with the cream. Cream. Yeah, cream I backing. agree. I think that cream would look backing. really nice. <laughs> nice. Um, so we'll just show you what you're going to get here. There you go. Now, a quarter of the stock has gone of your skirt. <laughs> I'm really going to struggle to say that. Skirling <laughs> Square kit. Uh, it's just £18.99. 746408 is your item number. Okie dokie. Do you have one more demo you could squeeze in? I can. Yeah. And it's going back to the charming blocks. I'll, what I'll do, if I may, then, Debbie, quick yes. recap, and then we can come to you just for the end. Yes. Perfect. Okay, because you might just be joining us. You might have had a nice lion. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but then we've also got um, these, which are fabulous um, kits with the pattern. So we've got the fiddle dee, -dee you've got your lovely mm -hmm. patterned print, you've got your solid, and then you have got your um, charm squares, five inch charm squares, nice. Then the next one that we're moving on to, we have got the last, uh, sorry, the large bloom, last bloom, not large bloom, last bloom, <laughs> there you go. That's pretty, that's, yes, yes. Are you not, why do they say you're not supposed to have favourites? I'm going to have a favourite. I like this one. And then the next one that we can move on to, this is the Abbey Rose. Look at that fabric. That's just beautiful. And then um, another of your favourites. So this one is the At Home in the Light. And it's this one. It's your border that's going to be the light. And then moving along. Perfect. We have got uh, the dark just because of this as well. So, But they're beautiful fabrics, aren't they? And last one with the five inch charm squares. So this is the Mackinac Island. I do like this. That's really cool. Again, let me show you the pattern. Marvellous, you're getting that pattern with any of those options. Uh, it's 36 pounds and 99 pence. One, two, eight, 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 one. At home light is still in the lead. I'm always fascinated to know what's in the lead. I like that. Um, and then we've got the kits where you've got your mini charms, which are dead cute. I like these. So you have got, this is the Regency. And then the second kit that we've got is the Nova. And again, you'll get that pattern. Uh, it's £15.99. pence. Item number is 595073 for either of those options. And again, one last time, let's check out the finishing kits. You've got the polyester, first of all, with either the cream you can go for, the navy, or you can go for the black. Uh, these are 50 by 50 inches, and you've got a lot there, haven't you? Uh, 18 uh, and then now you can also find the small on the website if you want to go, which is 25 by 25. Uh, and then you can go for the cotton. I don't know which one I'd go for. Anyway, um, <laughs> we've got the black. <laughs> just go for it. Get to make yourself two. Yeah, just one, one for each. summer, one yeah. for summer, one for winter. That one works. of each. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Okay. Uh, so again, you've got those different colour options. 21.99.023.923 is your item number. Cool. So shall we come back to you then, Debbie? So the last little demo here is going back to the charming squares. Yep. This one has double sashing on it. So it was just to point out again that the nesting, especially if you've got two different colours, is actually quite important because you want that to be a nice, even changeover. Or if you get it wrong, it will stick out like a sore thumb. It will be so obvious. So. Again, nesting that seemed quite nicely. I've actually just pinned all the rest of that over. Try and keep as many of your threads out of the way as well prior to sewing it, and it actually makes the job a little bit easier as Kim's just pulled all my threads through on the little um, skirling we squares. Always <laughs> we always have that. So you'll always get some, but the more you can keep to the front, mm -hmm. the easier it makes it for you yep. when you're finished. And again, just a nice quarter inch seam. Now some people don't pin 
Okay. Um, and that kind of... We're not a huge pinners. Um, we wouldn't be putting pins in every two inches, for instance. But mm -hmm. what you'll notice there is that Debbie had a pin at the beginning. You can get away with not having a pin to start off with, but you definitely need to pin it, in our opinion, and you definitely get good results by doing so. Pin it at the point where you're nesting those seams mm -hmm. that Debbie's just referred to. Yep. She's coming up for a pin now. Sorry. And between the start and the nesting, Pin it again. So pin at the beginning. We always say pin at the end, and then you can pull the two fabrics, the underside. You know, the, obviously you're sewing two two bits of pieces of yeah. fabric together, but you can pull it taut and um, distribute that fabric between the start and the finish. Okay. We know of quite a few quilters, and what I will say is, of, and she'll be watching this, and maybe not live, but sure. <laughs> so I am going to tell Joe of Crafty UK, Andy's partner. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, do you know Andy from? I Crafty? know Andy. Right. Okay. <laughs> We're, uh, they're up in Scotland, actually. They're looking after Debbie's dogs as really? we. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're and at my also, house. Do you uh, know we, what I what I've, I've understood about the quilting community is is it's a community, it's like a family. We yeah, had a so. lovely. Who was in? I think it was. The one time there was Anthea, there was Andy, and there was another person who was like, oh, hi, guys! I know, it's really nice in well, the, the studio. Well, the quilt shows, because of COVID, yes. the quilt shows, there haven't been too many of them, and they've just started up again uh, last month when yes. we had the huge quilt show in Birmingham. So you're right, it is a community, yeah. it is a, a, an extended family, it's a second family. But, um, yes, so uh, Andy and Joe, they're actually back in Scotland. We sort of... You know, we're making use of them and we'll be joining them when we go back tonight and for the yep. next couple of days. And that a big thank you goes out to them as well because right. they have helped us finish off a lot of these just in the last couple of days. Yeah. Right. They have, we, I have been working them. <laughs> That's been the room and board. But because Joe, lovely yeah. little Joe, um, was helping Debbie, Debbie spotted that she didn't. And she I will use pins. her as well. She doesn't use pins. Right. And sometimes that <laughs> distribution, you might have, if you've cut two pieces of fabric and they're the same length, yep. and you don't pin and you just think, well, I can just hold them and, and just let the sew machine the machine, the dog, the feed dogs that come underneath, mm -hmm. the, the, those bits of the machine that stick up, the teeth, they take the bottom part of the fabric through a very, it takes through like a, a, a micro um, difference yeah. to go. So what you might end up with is that you might have started with two same lengths of fabric, but actually you'll end up with an overlap, either the bit underneath or the bit on top. Yeah. You'll have more or less than the other piece. If you pinned at the beginning and at the end, so I will be beating up Joe about that when okay. I get back <laughs> to Scotland, learning that she doesn't pin. Yeah. You kind of want to pin quilters, not heavily pin, but certainly at the beginning, at the end, in the middle, and maybe the middle of the middle if you've got a large. Um, yeah. So pinning, that's what you're going to get. If you get bigger stitches here on the TV, we're going to go back to basics right. as well. So Amazing. So how and are we so doing there, Debbie? Just a lovely little seat. The difference it makes putting mm. a pin in there, my two orange points meet and my roads. two um, turquoise aqua colour uh, points meet at the cross and it just makes all the difference to your quilt at per the end. Perfect crossroads, that's yes. what we... But like I said, it's so it's so professional as well. What's your angel policy with these kits? Can we make them up to sell them or it's just for personal makeage, if you know what I mean? Um... I, do you know, I don't, we've never been asked that before, oh, actually. We so, can find uh, out. We'll find oh, out right, after okay. the show. Yeah. If you can mention bigger stitches, yes. whatever you're doing, and yeah. wherever, whatever <laughs> social media platform, whatever quilt show you're going to, if you can kind of, you know, big us up a little bit. Um, I, I'm not sure, actually, Alex. That's actually, all right. We so, sort that out. Um, but, um, yeah. And also, where, can we find you on social media as well? We can. We're trying to make our presence on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, uh, that much more mm -hmm. of a presence if you yeah. like so we're trying to be on there on a regular basis on a i, I would say at the moment is we've gone back to weekly yeah that's fair um enough. so whether you mention us or crafty uk at the moment like i said because we're working together quite yeah. closely but yeah we, we we haven't ventured onto some of the other Amazing. debbie and i we're in our fifth you know we're yeah. early 50s so <laughs> we need <laughs> the little good. kids to like start to show <laughs> us what to do with instagram and twitter and all those other ones Lovely so stuff.
Thank you, ladies. It's been a pleasure. Oh, Say hi been... to Andy and Joe for me. I will me. do. I will do. <laughs> Good Thank stuff. you, Alex. Thank no you. worries. Please do check out your baskets. There are some absolutely beautiful kits that we've got on the show for you. Uh, 36 99 if you want to go for any of these with the five-inch charm squares. 128881 is the item number. Next then, we're back with Lou for Daisy May Designs. Uh, after that, we're letting Leone loose with Stamperia. Uh, and later in the day, uh, we're back to the one day special. Hi, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp. And uh, how did I get here? Well, when my children, Grace and Mark, were born, I left the corporate world and I took up crafting full time. Then I had a moment of clarity, if you'll pardon the pun, and I came up with the transparent art stamp. And the rest is history, really. For the last 27 plus years, I've been pioneering the art of transparent stamping. If you like my style and you like what I do, then please join me, Barbara Gray. Hi, I'm Jenny Mays from Hobby Art. Hobby Art's a family-run company and we've been designing and manufacturing stamps for over 28 years now. Whatever your style, there's always something that will interest you with Hobby Art Stamps. Hi, I'm Catherine and I'm the guest presenter for Zuri Designs. Zuri Designs are based in America and they bring to us their exceptional quality silicon moulds. Zuri Design Moulds are used in all areas of crafting, not just for your clays and your resins, but also their food grade silicon as well, so used for your cake decorating designs. Zuri excel on the detail in their moulds, and the designs range from animals through to fantasy and much further beyond. If you watch the Zuri shows, I will share with you lots of hints and tips. I will show you how to use different mediums, ranging from your clays and your resins through to things like even your hot glue. So make sure you don't miss the Zuri shows. Very good morning to you and welcome to the second of our Daisy May shows. Now I should point out straight away that this is an entirely different uh, collection of stamps but if you miss the seven o'clock show then please look ahead on the website because it has a certain different feel to it. The lady who's going to tell us all about them is our lovely Lou. Good morning my darling. Hello. You've stepped in the fold for our Claire haven't you? Yes unfortunately Claire can be here so she's a bit under the weather at the moment. Well, um, big love to Claire. Yes. Hope you're feeling better darling. Hope you feel better very very soon. Um, so yeah I've jumped in last minute just to um, demonstrate so Claire, obviously Claire is the designer of all the stamps she does all the hand drawing she's done many of the samples as have our design team who are amazing you'll see those um, so I just get to play I do the fun bit lovely <laughs> and this morning if anybody wants to grab those there, there was a farmyard field there were horses yes. there were pigs there were yep. cow barns we were down on the farm this morning so a few examples still in the back here um, a beautiful set so you've Gorgeous. got pigs and horses and cows it's lovely really really fun really fun so I just wanted to highlight that because now we're going to visit the school nativity I love this collection because I, I love any of the nativity scenes um, makes me think of all the primary school visits that you've done with all you know various children in plays and what have you 
great one for the kids to get involved as well but just nativity with a bit of a difference they've got full-on character haven't they Lou? oh absolutely you can't see any tea towels in this set at all they are no. properly dressed up um no it's amazing i particularly love the angels because oh. i think that i was always an angel with the tin foil yeah, and all I think sorts everyone so. wants to be the angel don't yeah. they yeah um yeah i love this set it brings back a lot of memories but not only as being a child being in the plays but like you say going to see your own children your grandchildren whoever it may be just visiting the village school and watching the nativity and you've got things like animals in there as well if you want the to sheep, use those yeah. yeah it's good really good fun you've got all the traditionals there the three wise men the three kings sorry we're just coming past you, you you're coming past the uh, the shed the barn where they took shelter you've got uh, mary and joseph there and the manger and the baby jesus you've got some sentiments in there as well uh so and a lovely paper pad and stencil i love this paper pad now you've got six designs and you get four sheets of each so 24 beautiful sheets but they're, they're lovely uh, f they're, they're lovely scenic sets aren't they yeah bright vivid colors in these they're single sided so you haven't got to worry about which side you're going to use and which one you're going to hide oh, gorgeous no, aren't they really Love really bright one. and you can set the scene for all of your characters then yeah absolutely we've just seen that stage there and then you've even got the, the whole Bethlehem background there as well and a starry night. And then you've also got that beautiful starry uh, template there as well. But for instance, I love this is very clever, Lou, sort of extending the card that 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 that. Yeah, yeah, you, the, the you can curtains. Do that, that. So I think I think this is Helen's from the design team. So thank you, Helen. A fantastic job as always, mixing many of the stamp sets here together, and they really do work all together. They're all in <laughs> scale with each other, so you can pick and choose which characters you put on stage or yeah. wherever it may be. I love that. Look at that quirky angel. I'll have a closer look. I've got some more lovely samples here. So as we move across here, as I said, you've got the barn. You've got Mary and Joseph. So have a little look at that. I, I, I love this idea of maybe in the background there, you've got. Uh, away in a manger and the music um just just beautiful i'm trying to find one with our little barn it's probably one up here isn't it there we go so there's our our mary and joseph and then there's the the sort of the barn they've they've gone they've moved on i think on. that can almost look sort of tropical bar like it as well couldn't it, it could you could use it all times of year yeah the framework i, lo I love that yeah so you've got your mary and joseph and uh, the, the barnyard sorry we are full baby jesus this way absolutely gorgeous and then as we move across uh, we're coming to our three kings. So let me find one with our this. This is a gorgeous card as well. This is just one of the one of the kings. But it just shows you how you can mix and match it up, isn't it? There's one of our our gorgeous three. There they are. Isn't that a beautiful card? Forgive me for not name checking everyone. This Lou. is this is Claire. Uh, the one you're holding there is Claire. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think yes, this is Claire as well. She has a very Aww. distinct style. So Claire very often does the no line stamping. So her colouring in then covers oh, up the lines. And her colouring is oh, phenomenal. She's amazing. They look she like really printed is. out of a book. I know. She's, she's phenomenal. That good. She isn't should she? be a, an illustrator or What's something. What's the lady's name? Claire Rowland. Claire. So Claire designs. Yeah. She actually she's hand painted. Draws. She's hand coloured. Yeah, she hand Claire draws Rowland's. all of the designs. <gasps> Claire, you're amazing. Absolutely amazing. What card have I moved there? I've taken a card away. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's pop that one up there. Then we move across from our three and we've got our three shepherds here oh wow look at this i've just seen this card here this is just gorgeous folks have a little look at this triptych so we move from our shepherds and the wee bar lamb there i love the way it's carrying the teddy there <laughs> um so look at those papers aren't they gorgeous in the background and then you've got the way in a manger and then you've got three kings is this another one of claire's um no i think this may be helen's it, Helen. it's probably written oh. on the back I can't um, see I anything believe. on the back. That's, so forgive me. That's why I asked. Uh, we're not name checking wrong. anybody. It could be. I think Anne had did some samples oh. as well. Apologies if I'm missing names because there's been so many of you contribute towards this. It's Absolutely amazing. massive. Thank you to the whole design team because you're brilliant. And then as we move across, let's get to your favourite. Those gorgeous angels. Uh, look at their faces. So we've got one holding a star. We've got one with a star on her head, and uh, one with. Uh, what do you call it? Almost like beanie boppers coming out of her head. Isn't that go isn't that adorable? <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic. And you can have a lot of fun with this. And um, if you're thinking about colouring in your images, if that's what you like to do, these are the quickest and simplest to put together because, of course, it's just really your grey for your shading. Yeah. And you're done. Absolutely adorable. And then we're going to move to our animals, which is basically a gorgeous kid in a costume and a little donkey. <laughs> uh, they're just so cute, aren't they? There we go. Have a little look at that on the stage there 
I said to you, that reminded me where the wild things are, but yes. the illustrations, I love these. Look at this as well. How beautiful is that on a tapestry hoop? Follow I absolutely the star. love the style Isn't that, that Claire gorgeous. uses when she draws these images, but I would be tempted occasionally to pop a photo in place of the face and oh, just a little joke with that. That's a great idea. Look at those you see as well. Isn't that lovely? The little drummer, little drummer <laughs> shepherd there. And then your favourite there, last but not least, there's our angels again. All three of them causing mayhem. Oh, yes. Uh, You've got a bloody <laughs> angel there as well. Gorgeous. <laughs> so if you go for the whole collection, which, you, uh, quite frankly, you have to, in my eyes, simply because it's the nativity. So we can't split it up. We need the wise men. We need the shepherds. Uh, we need the angels. Obviously, you need Mary and Joseph and the barn. Uh, £62.91. You've got a £20 saving. 850215 and we can split that up into two flexi by pens of 31 pounds and 46 pence and that gives you the, st the stencil and of course those beautiful that paper pad is exquisite you can shop ahead on the website as well and see all the lovely farmyard animals we've got individual bundles for instance if you just want those gorgeous papers and the stencil 12 pounds 98 and we've got them in sets of two so you've got joseph and mary and obviously the barn as it were and then you've got your wise men and you've got your shepherds and then we've got the triptych of the angels there so we can split it up as well but of course you are getting the saving when you go for the whole lot and I just think I love the way they're a little bit different fun for those Christmas cards as well or setting the scene there um, they've got real full-on character I love them so Lou what are we looking at first my darling um, let's look at those three kings first of yes. all um, so I'm going to do more coloring techniques so I did some in the first hour at seven o'clock today so I believe you can still watch that back pick up some techniques I did techniques with alcohol pens and then I also did um, some pencil coloring as well which is perfect if you haven't yet invested in alcohol pens um, because very often the larger sets are an investment so I appreciate that um, for this one I am going to do alcohol pen coloring and then I'm going to do another quick and inexpensive technique for coloring your stamps uh, later on so stay tuned for that but I'm going to work with the three kings now this is a large stamp they're all a5 bases a5 packs um, this is probably one of the largest of Ooh. the whole of the nativity so I'm placing it on my paper first just to make sure that I can get the entire image stamped put my magnets on accordingly um, so I mean stamping these they are absolutely beautiful really good quality stamp as well um, there's a card ready to go with a stamp that size isn't it exactly it fills your card now i've cut mine out and i'm doing something really fun with ah. them as well creating a background but um i'll show you that in a little while now i'm not don't worry i'm not going to sit and color all of this now because to be honest if i want to sit and color an image i will spend a couple of hours doing it i'll take my time i'll add in my shading to virtually every little element it does take a while um, but i'm just going to show you a small element here but what i'm doing now is just taking the coating off of the stamp now i've already used this so so um, it won't, won't be brand new but when yours are brand new they're such good quality stamps you'll notice when you peel them off the backing that they've got this sturdiness to them but they may also have a coating on them so in case you stamp it without prepping it first the very mm. first time you may find your ink pulls a little bit that happens with all new stamps I'm just going over with a regular pencil eraser and I oh. do that out of habit I try and do that with every single stamp before I stamp it oh, it's not just that. because this is new or anything and it just takes any grease or anything off of that stamp oh, good top um, tip because I'm using alcohol pens, I'm going to use Memento ink. And I was, we were talking earlier about how Paula has done a wonderful chart. Oh yeah. Um, for which She's inks, the ink queen. Yeah, which inks to use mm. with which pens, pencils, different mediums. So Memento for alcohol ink. Uh, basically, the alcohol inks will not break down or dissolve the Memento ink. So you'll keep a nice bold image there. If you want to see your lines, if you don't want to see your lines, as Claire does with her stamping, yeah. um, what she usually does is use a very pale ink, and that just blends into her colouring there, so oh. you get that no-line look. I'm doing this just so you can really see the detail in that stamp. So that's one impression. It's absolutely beautiful. It is such a gorgeous design, so much detail. And like I say, she does hand draw all of these images. She is extremely talented. So That's so shame. good. She can't be here with you today because yeah. I know her colouring skills are phenomenal as well. And I learn so much when I watch her. Um, but what I'm going to show you today is a little bit of um, how to get sort of creases in fabric. So rather than colouring in one, um, one block colour, so I'm going to take 
uh, let's take an area, this triangle here I'm going to do. So quite a small area. I like to work on smaller areas rather than large ones because I think you've got more room for layering and hiding any brush strokes in a smaller area. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, is pick three colours that are similar for going from light to dark or dark to light. Okay. So the brand is irrelevant. These are just what I've got in my stash and I've got three colours similar. So what I'm looking for, the overall colour to be, is the middle one. The lighter one will be where my highlights will be and the darker one is the shadows. You can use, if you don't have three colours similar, you can go with a grey to create your shadows. Okay, it doesn't even have to be a dark grey. Very often uh, a reasonably light or mid grey will create depth in any, over any colour. So I'm going to start with my light colour first and I am going to go over the entire block here. It won't take very long because I'm using quite a large nib with this. And I'm always going to be colouring at the moment in this large piece in the direction of the fabric. Okay, so because the fabric is sort of draping downwards, I'm going to make sure my brush strokes also go downwards or in that same direction. Just in case, you shouldn't do, but just in case you get any lines within your colouring. Now, I don't have my glasses on and I'm not as close as I would be if I was sat at my desk colouring so you'll have to excuse me if I go over the lines a little bit okay just try not to look too close so just filling in that area there you go one base colour with my lightest colour so this colour is also like I say going to be my highlights so what I now need to do is add in my main colour but consider where my highlights are going to be so with this fabric, it's going, there's going to be a couple of different directions in it. So the fabric is going to be curved around the body, so mm -hmm. like this. So the top part of the fabric, if I just use my pen nib to show you, down the middle here is going to be a lighter area. Okay. So patch in the middle here, uh -huh. the edges will be darker. But I also want to add in where we've got this wave at the bottom, mm -hmm. I want to create um, a a crease in the oh, fabric, a, yeah. a fold in the fabric. So I'm going to have a darker area here included. Mm. So there's kind of, you've got to bear in mind the overall shape, which as I was working this morning on a sheep, so it was round, it was nice and easy, a round shape, yeah. to create where your light and dark is going to be. But then you've also got to think about the details. And in this one, we're going to have a few different angles, but we'll work through them. Now, with any shape, I always add a darker outline because even if you've got highlights, you're going to have a slightly darker edge so I'm going to add my darker color to the outline here and I'm using little strokes in fact I'm going to come to my larger brush and I'm just going to use little strokes again following the direction of the fabric just to make sure that that remains in case there's any lines that stand out when it dries and you have to remember as well with um, with alcohol pens, the colour you're laying down initially is not the end result. So the end result will be once the alcohol in the ink evaporates. Uh -huh. So all I've done there is I've left a centre centerpiece light. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my lighter pen again and I'm just going to blend that out. So this is just really blurring. Yeah. So where you're layering your lighter colour, that's not going to darken the middle eventually. No. Although you're adding more ink and it looks like it's gone darker, when that alcohol um, burns off, burns, doesn't burn off, evaporates, yeah. Yeah. that will lighten up. So okay. we're just blending. So we've already got a very slight variation there. Now I'm going to come in again because I wanted to add that crease line. Mm. So up the middle here, I want to have the darker area. And I think this is where it can get quite scary because you lay ink down and you think, oh, that's ever so dark. It's really not once it, once it dries off. And again, lighter colour just around the edges. Okay, so what I'm going to do just to show you, I'm not sure that may be fairly dry. It's just dry it with a heat gun just okay. to get the true colour. Yeah. And then we can carry on. So just give it a quick blast. You can do this at home. I don't recommend doing it too much because... Um, what will happen is you'll end up creasing and warping your paper over, oh, over time okay. with the, applying the heat. But it will just help burn off that um, alcohol a little bit quicker to give you the true finished colour. So we've got there, we've got a highlight and we've got a darker area. So now I'm going in with my next darker colour. I'm using the smaller nib now because I want to go cover a smaller area. Again, around the underneath of the cuff here. And I would break down each, each section of the drawing. Right. So each 
panel would be different. I wouldn't try to do this part and the other side of the jacket at the same time. I'd just work on this section. Why is that then, Lou? Well, just because the alcohol ink will dry and yeah. you want to work with it while you it's still... You want to blend. Yeah. And, right. So I'm going up that crease again, but I'm not going out as far as I was last time. Around the bottom of the... I want to call it a skirt, but it's not a skirt. But if cloak. you were colouring... A, yeah, yeah, it's a it's cloak. Like cloak, isn't it? If you were colouring a skirt, it would be very similar. I love the way the hat on that uh, little boy or girl is lopsided. Yes, <laughs> it's brilliant and, and just holding it Crown. on. Crown, it doesn't quite fit the head, yeah. And I do all my blending with my lighter colour again. So back to my lighter colour, I'm just blending in that those darker shades. And hopefully you can see there, I've just gone over the edge there, we've already, when you come back, you come back. And now I would work into that a little bit more. Yeah. And I would have taken my time anyway a bit more. But when you come back and look at it from a distance, you'll see you've now got that curve of fabric in there so you've already built in some structure yes it's already given it loads of shape and form yeah. yeah um let me just very quickly just do a crown for you before i move on to constructing this card oh, okay. another thing i wanted to show you is it white how do you do white because yes. if you leave it flat white you don't have like our the shape. angels and um stuff yeah, yeah. so or just sheep. a really really pale brown or a really pale gray um, this one's actually a brown grey, so a warm grey. And all I'm going to do, so imagine this cup is like a white fur. And this is great for Santa Claus, of course. And I'm just going to add shading in little dashes with a very pale brown to, obviously, the inside. Anywhere there would be shadows. So that's the underneath there. And that's given it, again, that highlight on the peak where it's curved round. And that will dry again and because this is inside this little bit would be even darker despite being white it would still be very dark you'd still have a lot of shadows so slightly darker gray right near the arm there and then just use your pale gray to blend that out and there we've got you would still look at that and think that that's white yeah the brain reads it as yeah, white doesn't it exactly yeah. but it's not got the flatness of it anymore and we can do exactly the same just with this crown. I'm going to do this much, much quicker, but I'm going to run my very pale yellow through the centre, well, through all of the crown here. So this is, a, imagining it's a gold foil crown, so a nice, bright, light yellow, and then coming to a golden yellow. In fact, I was going to use, I will use golden yellow. It's slightly darker, so it'll give you more contrast. Just coming from the top and little strokes from both the top and the bottom and then on the edge. And that will give you that look of having a Shine. highlight yeah. Yeah, through the centre. So just brushing the edges and taking back to your lighter one and just blend everything in. Hopefully we'll and see a few nativities this year because oh, nothing was allowed to happen last year, was it? It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be, yeah, my children are a little bit old, but hopefully... I've still got nieces that... And yes. No, no nephews at all. I've got five nieces um, <laughs> that are all young enough, so fingers crossed this year. But, yeah, so you can see that's how we build up sort of uh, your shape to your um, images. Now, I've cut these out, so oh. I've got them here. And they did take wow. me a little while to colour in. I'm, oh. I, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it so you can do this in five minutes because it is going to take a little while. If you're building up your your colouring and your shading yeah. in each one, you want to take your time. Um, but I absolutely, absolutely love those. When they're all coloured in, um, they look fantastic. They so, do. Look great. Um, I'm going to really make these bold colours stand out by putting them on black as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is I've taken this black piece of cardstock all cut down to size. I've taken a pokey tool, poked through ten times, and on the reverse, a bit messy, but on the reverse, oh, I've got some lights. Some okay. ladies. So if I, I've, I've obviously placed the bulbs. Twinkly. There we go. Oh, We've that's got so the good. Yeah, I'm such a so, simple child. I love things I like know, that. I know it's so I love much it, fun. I love it. So they are going to sit, and I've taken a backing paper. I didn't choose this until I'd coloured, um, but then I've chosen it to match one of the outfits of the Three Kings. So it all ties in. So I could have gone with the blue or the gold um, or the red, of course. Yeah, any yeah, of those yeah. colours. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get a tickle. I always get a tickle in here and never anywhere else. <laughs> the aircon. The aircon. Yeah, it must be. 
So just popping that on flat. I've got a lot of dimension with my black panel um, because I needed three layers of foam to accommodate. Oh, did everything. you the lights? I was going to say, how did you yeah. get that pronounced? Sort yeah, of? that's there's, ah. there's a bit of glue on there. Yes. Yeah, so just along here, I've got three layers oh, of yeah, foam tape. That. Yeah. Um, a piece in the middle, so of course it doesn't bow in the middle. Yeah. And then the battery, Your battery pack. does that job there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but That's you can get a good idea. different colours of these as well. I was tempted to put the multicoloured ones in. Oh, yeah. We had some the other day with, uh, oh, they do the MDF, Mark and Dr oh, Crafty Mark. Devils. Yes. Oh, yes. Four of the whites, and or you can have four of the multicoloured or mix. Oh, lovely. Yeah, the multicolours. The only thing with the multicolour is I would need to space them out pro like, oh, correctly. Right, okay. If I ended up with two blues <laughs> near <laughs> each other, I, it wouldn't be right. Is that your me. OCD? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crafty as you do. So yeah, so that's why. But you can um, you can also if you've just got white lights or sort of the yellow warm lights, um, you can use your alcohol pens to colour the bulbs. So oh, can you? Yeah, you can. I never knew that. Yeah, really? I've done that before. It's not as bright as buying the coloured lights, but you do get but a nice a nice subtle tinge of colour well, in I there. I never knew that. That's a brilliant top tip, Lou. So yeah, really handy to know. If you're in the paper pad, there I see as well. Yeah, so we've got the uh, wood background. Actually, yeah. I think that's from my own stash. Oh, is that it? One. I thought there was a wood background but in it. Did I dream it? It's a similar. There's a stage oh, in there you can use. Yeah, I think it was the bit of the stage, wasn't it? I was thinking. Yeah, quite possible. Yeah. So I sort of created my own stage okay. with this one. But yeah, if you've got the paper pad, it's absolutely perfect. So just popping foam pads on the back of these. Nice deep ones because I want to have sort of shadows behind there. I'm creating depth and quite a few of them as well. We've got some little areas on here that I don't want to get caught and lifted up. So piece, oh, I've just flicked a foam pad backing right over there. But that's fine. I kept, I kept the Let's some, some foam, foam tape. Yeah, well, Lou's just sticking. We've got a Sunday saver on the foam tape as well. 60 metres. Wow. Um, and, uh, yeah, all on the different rolls there. Uh, 337905. You're saving £9, so that'll change and go back to its original price of £26.97 on Sunday. So don't miss out. Yeah. Plenty of foam tape there. 60 metres. You'll be there forever. Oh, yeah. I mean, I put foam tape on everything. I love it. I love it. I think it makes a card extra special, doesn't it? It really does... They get bring that it dimension, from, yeah, yeah, popping up sort of thing, yeah. From an everyday card to a wow card. And the thick, for me, it's the deeper the better. The thicker foam tape I can get the better. Because if you're going to add it, you want it to really stand out. Absolutely. So there's one. So popping this one, I did have a plan with sort of where my lights were. So I did lay these on first and mark with a pencil. I see around. Yeah, ah, yeah just to, to make obscure sure. the lights. Yeah, if you've only got sort of 10 or something on there, yeah. then you want to make sure you can see you them all. You want to maximise the twinkle. Absolutely. In fact, that would be amazing if they actually twinkled. Um, <laughs> and then this little chap here, he's a little bit smaller so he can come down because on the stage they'd be staggered. I haven't actually got a sentiment for this one, but do you know what? Oh, there's some lovely ones in there, isn't there? There are some wonderful ones. I've just not... Behold, one. I bring you tidings of great joy. There, and the little okay. drummer boy, I played my best for him. Pum, 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 pum. Ah, 